<laughs> Welcome to the May 14th meeting of the Town of Hopkinton Planning Board. We have a packed agenda tonight. Um, I want to thank my uh, vice chairman uh, for handling the town meeting last night, for last week. Uh, for those who are wondering why I was missing an action, I had pneumonia. Uh, and I decided I probably didn't want to give it to the entire town of Hopkinton, uh, so I opted to um, uh, not uh, head in after the first night. Uh, first item on the agenda is the continued public hearing site plan review, minor project, multiple addresses on West Main Street if the applicant wants to come up. And we had gotten through the first two points of the outline, but I'm sure there's been updates. So I will ask the applicant to uh, uh, bring us up to date on what has been covered. Should, should, they, uh, should they reintroduce themselves? Oh, yes. Please reintroduce For the record, uh, Peter Barberi, Fletcher Thank Tilton, you. on behalf of the applicant, and Jesse Johnson, Bowler Engineering, Silver Design Consultant. Thank you. Uh, since the last time we met, uh, we had an opportunity to review comments uh, not only from, from this board, but design review and beta, uh, and have made a number of significant changes to the plan. We have representatives here to talk about the, the, the civil, the traffic, as well as the architecture. Um, looking at the site, From the viewpoint of that plan, um, we substantially uh, increased landscaping around the site, particularly at the entry points, as well as you can see from the entry at, at the intersect or the appearance from the intersection. Um, the other item you can see in that, from the viewpoint of that site, and Jesse will go over in more detail than I will, but um, as a result of reworking the drainage system, the de sunken detention pond that was up in the Easterly corner at the intersection of Elm and Lumber uh, has been removed, so that's going to be uh, a, a recharge system in that area as well as below that. So we're able to grass that area, create a full landscape area as well. Uh, although small from the viewpoint of the change in regards to the traffic, uh, the most easterly entrance on West Main, we've created a, a geometric uh, configuration there in an effort to restrict movements to right in and right out only. Uh, so that's the change from that perspective. Uh, from the viewpoint of the architecture, we had a couple meetings with the design review board uh, in your memo. It doesn't reflect the, the most recent one from uh, last week, uh, but we made significant changes to the, to the building uh, in the nature of the, the materials, uh, the colors, um, a trellis type feature over the right hand side of the building rather than just simple awnings. Um, interjection of windows and we're going to do some more of those things so I think we've kind of reached agreement with the design review board we just got to update the, the architectural plans uh, and I think to some extent that's where we are on a lot of issues we just got today beta's updated memo and we'll talk about a little bit more about that but I think for all intent and purposes there's nothing that we see within those that really cause any major change in the nature of the site so that's kind of the, the process update. We've also had further discussions with the Conservation Commission. And again, once we fully wrap up on the drainage, we anticipate wrapping up with the Conservation Commission as well. Okay. So why don't we start with the specific changes in the nature of Thank the you. engineering. Again, Jesse Johnson, Bowler Engineering. Uh, what you have before you is a revised site design. Uh, it won't look too different probably for you as far as the edge of the pavement hasn't changed much. The building location, the canopies, those are all pretty much as you had seen before. What really changed was the stormwater design. We had gone on site and done some updated groundwater testing in areas proposed for recharge and then also just to kind of get an idea throughout the site what the nature of the soils are and more accurate groundwater based on visible uh, soil evaluator observations out there. Uh, what we found, unfortunately, was the groundwater was higher than anticipated. And as a result, we had to dramatically change the stormwater system proposed at the site. Uh, what we did realize was the existing <laughs> sediment floor bay located over in this area, immediately adjacent to the wetlands, is essentially in groundwater 
uh, by about half a foot or right at the groundwater. So anything that's running off the site now and sheeting into that low depressed area, it's not only not functioning well, but it's it's right up against the groundwater and then adjacent to the, the little wetlands. So what we thought the best case scenario uh, that we could do was take that out of the system, take that BMP out and replace it with something better. Obviously, uh, you can see here with the edge of pavement outlined in black, we have pulled back significantly with the edge of the pavement to this area and we've replaced all that with an updated low profile uh, settling area. It'll go through its paces before it gets to that with getting some treatment through filtering, through long grass swales, uh, but then it'll ultimately go to that one area uh, adjacent to the wetlands that we've now updated to with some additional plantings. Uh, we do have an outflow pipe from that at a low elevation so it's not always sitting there with water um, with a pipe on that, I'm sorry, with a valve on that pipe to make sure that if there was any type of <coughs> spill um, that we could shut it down and hold everything to make sure it doesn't dump into the wetlands. Uh, we also lined that uh, basin with an impermeable barrier because we don't have the minimum two foot separation that you'd want to see in anything that's going to recharge or at least forcing again to have that water be able to be contained easily in the event that you have some type of spill or something up on the paved area. We also had to revisit over here in this region as Peter had mentioned there was a request from the board to revisit that open de detention basin design so we replaced it with an underground system that you see here in black but it also required a secondary one to be connected to it over in this region. So the good thing is now you have a landscaped area on top, you don't see a fenced area with an open you know, three to four foot deep basin right at a, a prominent intersection. So we did uh, take that into consideration. We also updated the landscaping, you can see significantly at that entrance. We also beefed up the landscaping on this corner and a little bit over on here on that entrance. Uh, so we did take that to note. Uh, there was also a request from the board, if I remember correctly, to extend the sidewalk where it terminates right here and bring it into the site more. So we extended the sidewalk along Elm Street, bringing it up into the, into the site here with a crosswalk and then getting right over to the patio area. Uh, we did look at if it made sense to extend down this way, but uh, it really didn't given that you're going to have people pretty much coming to this spot, you're going to want to get them up and in the store right away. Um, there really wasn't any good area to extend that, there was too many obstructions with a uh, retaining wall, a, a stone field wall, utility poles and no real good defined edge of pavement, so we thought this was the safest solution to get people up into the site. Uh, the other changes. Uh, Again, we're a little bit more of just trying to refine the site to suit the stormwater now. I did show this design to the Conservation Commission. Uh, they were initially were on board with it. They, they liked the changes. They understood the restraints that we have there. They understand that it will be a significant improvement for what's in place now within their jurisdiction. Uh, we did get requests from Beta to take one more visit and see if we can put in an oil water separator over on this side before it goes into the wetlands. So we're going to look at that and see if we can add at least one more BMP into our treatment train before it goes off the site. Uh, I think generally though the other comments that came back regarding the stormwater, having us look at uh, the model a little bit more and getting some consistency between that and our details. We looked at that preliminarily, no changes to the design, we'll have no issues updating those. And responding back to that data formally to, to say we're in compliance. Um, other than that, the other comments that came in, we didn't see any big issue either from beta on the planning side. Uh, just some clarifications again, nothing really of substance. Uh, we did hear that there was some concerns with the lighting design, that we had some intensity underneath the canopies on both sides and that some spillover and immediately adjacent in and around the canopies was a little higher than you'd like to see. Uh, we did make a design change to go from, I think we were 16 feet before, now we're under the 15 foot threshold of 14 max with 12 foot poles on two foot uh, structural bases. So we're under the 15. That did require us to put in a couple more fixtures. Uh, we did have the canopy design stay the same as it was previously, but we were able to reduce the lighting levels around the perimeter as asked. We got those down significantly lower, so where by the time you get to the middle of the road, it dissipated to zero. Uh, what we do want to remember underneath the canopy is that it's, it's a safety situation first and foremost, but then also you have 
an equipment that's got to be operated by the end user. They got to be able to put the cards in, read the keypads. They got to be able to be able to see very clearly under those. So we think we have good lighting levels. We think the bigger concern would be to make sure by the time you get to the outer perimeter of the site, those levels have dropped down to something more reasonable. And we also want to make sure that we have very good lighting levels between the canopies and the store itself. So these access aisles need to be very well lit so that anybody's crossing there uh, from the canopy to get into the restaurant isn't going to be hit by any cars coming through there. Uh, if you want us to revisit anything, we could look at the lighting on the outside levels of the canopy. Uh, those are, I think, around 13 to 15 right now. If you wanted us to take a look at that and see if we could improve that, we probably could, given the fact that you shouldn't have cars parked out there and it's just more of a travel way. Uh, but we would like to keep the safety lights underneath the canopy in between the canopy and the store. But that's pretty much a general overview of what we had. Uh, if there's anything that you'd like us to answer more particularly? Just a quick comment to the chair. I just really wanted to say, Thanks for working with us uh, to remove the retention ponds and uh, put the stormwater underground. That's that's very helpful and be very nice for the property. And uh, thanks for working with the design review board on the the uh, look and feel of the building. So thank you guys. Any comments on the lighting? Not on lighting. <coughs> One technical comment, Mr. Chair. And so I'll agree with my colleague in terms of the changes. Uh, I was not physically at the last meeting, but I was. Watch the video, and uh, you know, I appreciate those changes. One comment, technical question: Is he talked about adding a two-foot or an impervious surface over there on the left-hand side near the wetland? Impervious surface. Pervious oh, impervious barrier. Yeah. Barrier. The barrier. Yeah. Yeah. So, what is the useful life of the barrier, and who's checking on that? You know, once that useful life has run its course, to ensure yeah. that <clears throat> over time it doesn't potentially waters or waste the discharge seep into. Sure. So typical barriers that you would put in would be a poly liner, they're called, which is yeah. just that. It's plastic yeah. uh, that they bury. Uh, it's used all the time in septic system installations. You'll often see a barrier put in when they want to hold one side of the, the fill, if you will, for a septic system so it doesn't bleed out. So they're, they're tried and true. They work all the time. Or you can literally use a soil, a very dense uh, clay type of soil as the barrier itself. We propose here the, the poly liner just because it's, it's a little bit easier to install and it's a little more uniform. That's going to that's gonna have a half-life of beyond that any of us in this room. And, and <laughs> it's going to be buried also a foot below you have to remember. So it's, it's not going to have exposure to sun. It's not going to have exposure to um, traffic or anything that would carry it. So it should be fine. Okay. Thank okay. okay. you. did you have another comment? I think we're going to get to it more and more along, along the lines of the traffic uh, patterns. Okay. I, I should also, I apologize, I should have mentioned, with the right in and the right out, we did make that change. Uh, right. We had a, if you can see before, we had just straight pavement through this area. We kept the outer limits of the pavement the same because they line up well with the, the travelways so that somebody coming into the site will be directed to the proper access aisle and same thing, somebody leaving will be in the same curve line, if you will, but we did introduce this center island that tells mm -hmm. people it's one way in, one way out. Uh, it, it, we did hear from Beta that they wanted us to revisit that and see if there was something else we could do to just refine that a little bit more and make it more pronounced. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, I can say because we have the crosswalk here, it does challenge us to do anything up towards the front, but maybe we can do something towards the back of that island just give people that are using it a little bit more indication of this is the direction you should go in or come into the site. So we will revisit that a little bit too. I, so the one thing that concerns me about traffic is uh, when people are <coughs> exiting and trying to go east and crossing over the, you know, crossing over one lane of traffic, it seems to be a, uh, Quite the quite the mess there. Mm -hmm. I think we have to go out the back. The west. We're going to yeah, be forced course. to go out back. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Light, right? Okay. So there'll be that wayfinding wrong. signs within the site to direct people. Okay. Want to go that direction? That's right. how you're going to end up coming out. So actually, not to the back, but they could also use the west entrance on West Main Street, right? Yes. In theory, yeah, you could. They could come. They could take a left out of there. They could. Yes. 
this will be the this is the one that we change the restriction on. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Amy, did you have a so is the, has the lighting changed since we saw it at design review last week? Oh, not since last week. I'm sorry. Okay. Since the last time was before the planning board, we changed it. So the, I'm looking at the plan. It's really so small, but it looks like it's 14 or 15 uh, candles on the outside of the canopy on the uh, east side. Right here. Right? Right. And That's the one I... I, I can revisit that. And I, I can have them take a look at that and try to get those down. I think we should because that's the side that's near the neighbors yeah. on Elm Street. The sure. Is, you know. sure. The other discussion along that side that we had at the design review, one of the couple more trees in between those two trees on the right, which I thought we could do, but that's where the underground uh, basin is. Oh, so we've got to look farther to the east to, to provide a little bit more separation, a little more screen. Okay. So it can't I, be right up against the parking lot, but it can be farther to the east. I could do east. something in here, though. If you want okay. to try to fill that gap, if that's what you're thinking of doing, yeah. so we can do something on this side of the detention basin or the underground infiltration system. I think whatever you can do to shield from the neighbors would be yeah, great. Can, yeah, yeah. We can beef that up a little bit. <coughs> and so the sidewalk is stopping on, on the Elm Street side um, at that parking lot. Well, Will there not be people walking from like looks like 86 um, Elm, like this office parks directly behind it, and then a little bit to the west? Over here. Yeah. The use is back there. The, in looking at it, it, looks like this is where you would have people more, who more might potentially be walking. Yeah, the use is over here. Really and that's generated. and you want to direct them to the intersection so they're in a crosswalk sure. rather than a mid crosswalk anywhere else. Yeah, but on Elm Street, it's a dead end, right? So. Yeah. This. So it's it would be people. This could is actually cross. a loading area for this facility right here. These trucks now come down, pull into the existing entrance, and back into their site. So you have a couple loading docks. It's not really an area where you're going to have people parking to access an office space or something like that. It's okay. Just sometimes they've tried to rezone that area so it could or it, and have new uses. So it could be their offices at some point that people might want to walk to, to the gas station, but I don't know. That, and just follow up, that is our, is a part of the, part of the hotel district, so potential that it could be developed in the future and you would have people walking along the north. Even yeah, I mean, we're, we're so. probably anticipating what you're going to have is along Elm Street on the north top side, side of the plan, side. a right. sidewalk. Because right. mm -hmm. on the bottom side, you plan you got all wetlands over on this right. side, and then there's right. only one smaller office building on our same side of the street farther right. down. Right. So uh -huh. if you keep everybody on the sidewalk on the other side, they can come down to the crosswalk, right. which will be right at the signal and therefore provide the protection with the crosswalk. Which no one will do because right. pedestrians and drivers right. are like water. They take the path of least right. But if we put a, a crosswalk just on our side, then we're feeding yeah. into the liability yeah. issue of mm -hmm. right. asking people to cross midstream. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Oh, um, I, I'm sorry. I we, we were talking about additional screening on the end, and I really appreciate that. Um, and I sort of lost track um, along the corner where Elm Street and yes, is there a, the ability to really beef up the the screening there? Because that really is sure. where all the um, the the um, that faces all the homes along there. Yeah, we could do something similar to the density we have over here. We can kind of mirror it on the other side. That'd be side. great. Sure. That'd be helpful. And I, I also, anything that you can do to minimize the lighting on the perimeters and still maintain your safety yeah. um, would be very appreciated. Yeah, we did get it down. Uh, I know by the time we even got to this side property line, we were down to zero. Uh, back here, we were down to 0.1 by the time we got to the edge of Pave, and I think we were half a foot candle here at the edge of paper by the time it got to this first uh, travel lane it was down to zero so we I uh, appreciate that a lot we could take another look though when we're doing this they got to do something anyways um, around this area that I think will help even reduce it in this grass mm -hmm. just to remind everybody we are going to go this is the overview we are going to mm -hmm. go detailed okay. we think we just cruise right through that <laughs> <laughs> right hi oh, sorry I was late um, just a couple comments then, light comments. Um, I appreciate the extra focus that has been put into the northeast corner um, that we spoke about last time. Uh, I just want to echo some of the concerns about screening on the eastern side. Uh, we did discuss that the north side would also be an entrance for people coming from the hotel overlay district, uh, from the businesses that are there now. 
Um, and I, I would like to see a sidewalk on that side. Um, and um, I would like to see also only one entrance and exit on the Elm Street side. Um, and I'd like to hear maybe some reasons for having two okay. entrances and exits. Okay, when we get into the detailed plan, I think that's a good spot for that. One thing worth mentioning regarding Elm Street and what's going on for existing conditions is, so we have a catch basin here and right here right now. Those are actually off the edge of the pavement a couple of feet. They're into some grass areas and actually it's more gravel between them and the edge of pavement. If we had to put sidewalk all the way in, obviously we'd have to introduce curbing. Now we completely change the, gra the grading and drainage patterns out there. We would not be able to maintain those same catch basins. We'd have to now, it would be a buy-in of not only the sidewalk, but reconfiguring all the drainage infrastructure in this section of Elm Street and then trying to figure out how to retie it back in. So it, it becomes a significantly different project that we think doesn't really improve the safety and access to the site than what we've already proposed. And there is a sidewalk on the north side. Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, yes. I don't hear you. It's, it's, it's not on Elm Street. No, no, no but up to the corner. Why don't you go to uh, um, Perkin? It, yep. it is all the way to the school. Yeah. It goes all the way to the school. Because I live over there now, so I know yeah. <laughs> this area intimately uh, where that sidewalk starts and where we go. But I would think that's where you want it because as you're building everything farther up that way, you're going to keep it on that side of the street. Well, I think the one area, and I think what where Frank's referring to, is the low flex space that's on the left that abuts 495. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what I would think you want, would want to look at, because again, that's a potential redevelopment site, is not necessarily carrying it all across the site, but maybe being able to do a sidewalk to that next, uh, to the westernmost, northwesternmost entryway. Are you talking entryway. about this? Yes, that's a potential here? redevelopment site. So we're, that's the end of our limit. So right now, our egress is over here. Right. So the only thing stating is you might want to revisit that little stretch from your northwest driveway going to the edge of the property. Going, west. going, going west. all the way down that way? Going down to the edge of the property, but not necessarily right behind the uh, restaurant building. building. Yeah. Because right. you're not right. going to get anybody going this way. So if no. you look at. Can you show us the other one? Yeah. yeah. Behind you. One behind you. The one behind you. Oh, sir. Yeah. And look at the northwest entrance. So from here, yeah. Go, from here. go west. Go west. Huh? Go west. Go west, young man. <laughs> um, to where the property line is, which may not even be the whole way. Yeah. Before we go out there, you've got a the, that light green yep. is the wetland. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is yeah. your edge of pavement right here. I'm going to be into wetlands if I put okay. a sidewalk in. Right. But it's pretty disturbed as it stands. What is? The that light green area right now is, is. No, this is all. This is all untouched right through here. So this is the edge of pavement. Right here, this is my edge of wetland. So I'm okay. I don't have the ability to put in a sidewalk and not affect those wetlands. Can you just show us on the overview plan where that break is between the wetlands and the? So roughly, your wetlands are, are right here. Okay. So that's what I was saying before. This is a loading dock for this building right here. There's nothing really that's going to be generated from that. Are they still going to be backing into your property to turn around? You're still changing that around. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, that's going to be a rude awakening for them because that's going to be. <coughs> okay. okay. Can you show me what, on that plan because it has the opposite side of the street where your new entrance, how it's offset from. It's kind of the yellow. Cumberland. Oh, actually, I, I updated my rendering to show you. This might even be a little bit better. So these are the these gray areas oh, okay. are the curb cuts. So you can see now. There's my new curb cut, not directly across from anything existing. Same thing over here. That's the closest one right here with that right out yeah. for that curb cut. So they actually The one that everybody drives up. over. There's no one lined up, whereas right now, this one does line up with right. existing. We right. don't have that anymore. Okay, That's thank you. To the chair, to yep. the, since we're on the subject. So directly north of the property that um, 
on the property, sorry, the green area that you were saying that there's storm drains that you wouldn't be able to put in the sidewalk. Right behind yeah. the building. Is there any reason not to come off the road and put a sidewalk five, ten feet? To That's the what I said. There's a there's a pretty nice little field stone wall right here that we were not having to touch for our project, and that it's a pretty significant grade change as well. Um, as a result of the wall, the wall's holding up probably about two feet of, of soil before it gets down to. Um, no, but I was thinking inland on the grass area, like ten feet in here. Like your property. Yeah. Or you could put something there, right? Yeah, I don't know what that. I don't know who would be yeah. using that stretch between yeah. those two entries. Well, like Frank said, there's a lot of people that walk around during lunch that work in the. the well, building. but I mean, if they're doing that and they're coming from let's call it the 495 north yeah. side, they're going to come and cut across our new driveway. They're not going to the right of that. There aren't many. There's not many people coming from that side now. I mean, right. to the point of redevelopment, maybe. But they're not going to necessarily walk to the farthest entrance to walk right. in. Yeah, they're going to come right in through here. Yeah. If right. it is redeveloped, that's an opportunity we were talking about earlier, and I think it makes a lot of sense. The other side has the opportunity for the parking lot to right. extend. I to think it's part of any development on the north yeah. side of Elm Street, you you got to work a sidewalk on that I, northerly side. I, I understand what you guys, through the chair, understand what you were mm -hmm. saying about that, but this is a new development and there's no reason not to have a sidewalk there when we don't have one on the other side and not try to figure out where people are going to walk and where they're not going to walk, you know? If it's... Um, okay, just, why, why just don't quick, we hold yeah. that for yep. the sidewalk where we get just, a pedestrian? Just one quick follow-up. So the sidewalks you're talking about continuing, will those be concrete? Uh, yes, we have okay. this concrete here, so we would match that and bring it up. Into okay, the thank you. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to cover? On the I think, I think that's well. it. Okay. In the nature of the site. Okay. Um, again, we have traffic in, in architecture. I don't know which one you. Yeah, need. we're going to go through the the, through the, the outline. The so, outline, yeah. Um, if you have no other kind of intro comments. We'll ask uh, our friend from You Mayda. want to show you the architecture, or you want to wait? Why don't we to keep it? Well, why don't we look at the the beta comments? And yeah, then there, we get there is to, a light item for building and yeah, building we'll and screening. Down. Building and screening. For the record, Phil Paradis of Beta Group. We reviewed this project for uh, the planning board conservation as well. And uh, with me today is Tyler Deruda, who, who reviewed the uh, traffic uh, for the Board of Appeals. Um, the, the, uh, they're all three reviews are in separate letters because of the way we've received the project. Um, but in general, we've uh, we've seen the, the plan twice now. Um, we've seen they've incorporated a lot of our recommendations uh, relative to engineering comments that we provided. Um, the uh, few, just a few things to remind you the because of the shape of the project uh the parcel they are requesting a waiver from the setback from uh, from uh, frontage um and i don't know what the process is with the zoning board of appeals but uh well that's going through that that process um they also are proposing 24 parking spaces where uh, from your zoning regulations only 12 are required uh, they did provide a little bit more explanation as to uh, the fact that they are providing uh, some, kind of some cafe type indoor and outdoor seating uh, for, for people to enjoy their snacks as they're uh, on site. So uh, we would obviously defer that to the board. The, um, we also asked for just a minor clarification on the water demand. Uh, they based it on the islands. Obviously we want to have incorporate the, the water demand for kind of the takeout and uh, seating facilities. Uh, you've already discussed a little bit of the sidewalk issue and I'll defer that to you uh, when, when it comes up again um, and the photometrics um, that we had a similar concerns. For storm water management, um, we did have a request initially to for them to provide some soil test data. They did that, they did find, which is what we're finding pretty much all over Eastern Massachusetts at this point, that groundwater levels are above seasonal high groundwater levels. Uh, so unfortunately, because they did testing at this time, 
it impacted that project. But if, if you do run into projects that are, are concerned for groundwater right now, it's above what we typically design for, which is the seasonal high groundwater, uh, just for your information. And then um, because this is a gas station, which is a land use of higher potential pollutant load, uh, they are required to provide additional BMPs, and that's why we're asking them to put the uh, oil grid separators in. Um, they have, they basically are meeting the uh, stormwater management standards and not increasing the peak rate of runoff. They are providing, uh, uh, they're not providing any untreated uh, new discharges to wetlands. They are providing groundwater recharge. Um, they're providing a pro the potential, I mean, the water quality treatment requirements, uh, <coughs> erosion controls, operation and maintenance plan, and illicit discharge statement. So, if you would like to hear from Tyler, he, he could give you a briefing on the traffic this time. Well, why don't we, when we get into the okay. detail, okay. but it work that, that way. Excellent. Thank you, Phil. Uh, next item on the agenda is planning board. Add to the outline. Any additions to the outline? Well, we so. discussed solar before, and I think it's on the outline. But um, we'll cut it under utilities. Yeah, mm -hmm. looks like to revisit it. Okay. No other comments for the planning board from the abutters, public, or the applicant. You would. Any items to add to the agenda for discussion? Again, just if you want us to have an updated traffic and architecture, that's all we're okay. participating in. Um, we've got that. Now we'll go into the detailed discussion. Uh, vehicular and pedestrian traffic flow. And now's the time. Now's the time. So it's to and from West Main Street, to and from Elm Street, and within the site. You can take them in any order. <laughs> uh, good evening, my name is Jason Adams. I'm a traffic engineer with McMahon Associates. Uh, we prepared a traffic impact study, which uh, the last meeting I gave a kind of brief overview, so I guess I, um, I don't know, are there specific things you'd like me to speak to? Um, I can I walk you through the methodology of the study, or I know- Well, I a brief the, overview, and then if there are any specific questions, we have. Mm -hmm. You know, at least one person who wasn't here physically during the presentation. Sure. So. Yep. Um, so we completed a traffic impact study looking at the project site access <coughs> as well as the signalized intersection of West Main Street and Lumber Street. Uh, we collected turning movement counts during the weekday morning and weekday afternoon peak periods. Uh, we projected those, those traffic volumes out into a future year uh, and accounted for uh, known adjacent development, including the Dunkin' Donuts project. Uh, the full build out of uh, some of the retail and residential pieces along Lumber Street, uh, and then we performed a trip generation assessment of the project site. Uh, given that the use is essentially already there, we'd expect that um, you know this project is primarily going to serve existing users to the site. Um, looking at the trip generation data, uh, we also see that the majority of users to the site would be expected to be past my trips which are trips that are already traveling past the site. Um, so the site itself uh, as a project would, would be expected to generate approximately uh, 16 new entering and 16 new exiting vehicle trips during the weekend morning peak hour, uh, and approximately 24 new entering and 24 new exiting vehicle trips during the weekday afternoon peak hour. Uh, so we distributed those vehicle trips uh, to the project site driveways. Uh, we'd expect the majority of vehicles traveling to the west and towards 495 to access uh, via the site driveways on West Main Street. Uh, we'd expect vehicle trips that are eventually heading to the east to use the site driveways onto Elm Street and circulate around via the traffic signal at Lumber Street. Uh, we conducted a traffic analysis review of both the site driveway operations as well as the signal. Uh, and that review indicates that the project would not be expected to significantly change the operations that we see there today. Um, based on some of the comments that we had received from Beta and, and just general discussion with, with your board, um, as Jesse said, we have proposed a change to the access along West Main Street so that the easterly driveway, uh, which was originally proposed as full access, 
uh, would operate as a right-in, right-out uh, driveway. Uh, our traffic counts indicate that the, the great majority of vehicle trips coming onto West Main Street are right turns out of the site today. Uh, we would not expect that to change the, as part of this project. Uh, it's very clear that the vehicles that want to head to the east would do so via Elm Street. Uh, we do feel that it's important to maintain uh, left turn access at the western driveway, uh, both to remove some of the pressure on the traffic signal today so that vehicles coming into the site can, can do so via a left turn instead of having to travel through the signal and around the site. Uh, and also on off-peak times, we feel that providing a left turn out onto West Main Street does add a level of convenience, uh, which is important for this type of use. Uh, it's, it's clear from reviewing, again, existing operations that uh, given the convenient nature of this use, uh, vehicles are not inclined to take that left turn out during those peak times when it, when it is the busiest on West Main Street. Uh, but on off-peak times, it is important for us to be able to get our customers in and out of the site uh, safely and efficiently. Um, so overall, we feel that the site has been designed in an appropriate way. Uh, I know there was a comment earlier about the access onto Elm Street. Uh, what we see as a great benefit of the, the configuration as proposed is that it reduces the number of circulating trips around the site so that vehicles that are using uh, one side of the, the fueling or another have a direct access if they're looking to, to travel out via Elm Street. Uh, there's not really opportunity to connect the two driveways behind the building or move the building really closer because you need to maintain a circulation aisle and the parking in front of the building. Uh, so these two driveways here uh, really do allow the site to, to keep the trips on one side or the other. You have less, less movements that would potentially conflict with pedestrians or parking maneuvers that happen in front of the site. Uh, and we feel there are a lot of benefits to providing the access as currently shown. Um, again, I can go into any kind of detail, but that's through the chair. Probably the overview. I do have one suggestion. Um, the entrance coming out on the westerly entrance mm -hmm. on West Main Street. Yep. yep, coming out and taking a left turn. I do agree with you that it, it should be a convenience thing. Um, what would you think about the possibility of putting a sign there saying no left turn between the hours of 7 and 9 in the morning and 4 and 6 at night? Just to kind of discourage a little bit. It's not a hard mm -hmm. stop, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, it's like they're, no kind, of, there. they're kind of a tip to people that remind them, hey, there is a back entrance I could use if I want to. Sure, yeah, we certainly take a look at that. And, and again, I think there's only you know three or five cars total over the course of the, those peak hours that are taking that left turn, so it really wouldn't change much. But the crazy people like me. The crazy yeah. people, yeah. Right. Right. Through the chair, but to David's point, that I think taking a left hand turn there during peak hours when you can't really make that left-hand turn is going to have an impact on other people that are trying mm -hmm. to make the right-hand turn there. So I could envision it backing things up because I think there's only one exit, right, um, per car, right? you got an entrance, one car, exit Correct. car, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If somebody's waiting two or three minutes at 5 o'clock to try to make a left-hand turn, which is virtually impossible unless you want to play roulette, um, it does have a potential downstream domino impact. Because mm -hmm. yeah. if I get the sense it's 24 additional cars during the evening, Correct. Yeah, that's not insignificant. Yeah, it's, a, it's a car every two minutes or so, two or, two or three minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, we can, we can certainly take a look at that type of stuff. That might be a good solution to, yeah. to, yeah. to, to address some of that. And I don't know if there is any type of a signage, but following up, and I'm sure it's something you would love to put up, and I'm being <laughs> serious, <laughs> is no cross traffic to Cumberland Farms because the amount of people who, and I know it's not aligned mm -hmm. properly, but the number of people who do it, and my fear is they're so used well, to think, doing it, it's at a diagonal now, it's even worse. I, I think what you do rather than no left turn during those hours, you say right turn only during right those hours. Right turn only. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That works. That's it. That works. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. It's not at least necessarily going to help. Right. <laughs> the chair so you, you you also have uh the curb cuts shown for starbucks and the gray areas mm -hmm. there the, those are the gray and those yeah. don't line up either yeah. okay through the chair yes so um i have some questions about your numbers sure. um same business owner same as the new dunkin donuts uh isn't a lot of that business going to be shifting just a few feet down the road uh and i won't that be impacting this location in a different manner with less traffic 
and I don't see that you're having less traffic. I see you're having more traffic. Right. And is it because there's additional gas pumps, or is it additional well, items to buy in a store? Or so we wanted to present a conservative analysis because we want to be comfortable knowing that this site and this site design can process the expected demand of the site. So yes, there is a, a Dunkin' Donuts today, which essentially those customers that are coming on the site just to go to the Dunkin' Donuts would no longer be coming onto the site. But we didn't want to try to take vehicles off of this site and try to present this project as being something that's going to remove traffic. Now, in, in reality, it very well could remove traffic from the site itself as, as those vehicles, instead of turning into the site, travel past the site and to the Dunkin' Donuts. But, but again, our, our primary focus is the safety um, related to the movements, the efficiency related to the movements in and out of our site, um, and understanding our project impact to the, the surrounding roadway system as a whole. So where those vehicle trips are doesn't specifically change that, but, but you're right. The, the truth of the matter is that the number of vehicles coming to the site probably isn't actually going to increase, but, but we wanted to present an analysis that showed an increase and, and therefore understand that it, it can accommodate those vehicles. Through the chair, I appreciate conservative estimates, uh, certainly. Um, but did your account count the coffee donut people separately? Because they'll currently they'll come in and they'll park on the east side or they'll park on the west side. Uh, and maybe there's an overlap with some people getting gas and then going in, leaving their cars at the pump and going in. And it, it seems like maybe two thirds of the people are there for coffee and donuts at any given time. Um, at least in my observation, um, you know, I'm not a scientist on this. Um, but that said, a conservative estimate is a better than, than not, I guess. Um, but when you give a conservative estimate, it's, it's given you're saying, well, we need this extra traffic flow, and I don't believe you need two curb cuts onto Elm Street, and I'm against that. The easternmost side of Elm Street curb cut should not be there. Uh, I don't think we should take away the greenery um, that's currently there, and I think it would make a nice, much nicer place to have a lunch if I'm sitting there on tables uh, than if cars are driving by. Um, to, to the chair. I just think, Frank, that might be a personal opinion. We might want to talk amongst ourselves whether that's something we request of them or not. Um, I'll leave it up to the chair. Yeah, what are your... I, I will tell you my personal opinion. I think if you close that, you're going to have more people trying to come out the, onto mm -hmm. West Main and going in the direction. I want to give them as minimal disincentive to go out and come around because, to be honest with you, I think the traffic is and getting people out that entrance is more important than a place for somebody to eat. And that's my big concern is the traffic and people trying to come out and make the turn. Because if you have during peak hours no left turn uh, or right turn only and you close that, you know as well as I do, path of least resistance, they're going to come out and try to turn. Yeah. Any other? I agree with you. I would agree. And do the trucks need to come, the refueling trucks need to um, come in that other entrance anyway? To deliver the, the gas? Or they go in the front. front. They go in the front, okay. Okay. Yeah, I kind of appreciate the, your, your idea, Frank, but I, I agree that the only way to at all incentivize people to not turn left out of that, that entrance way is to make sure that they have the, the most advantageous exit to the intersection. Have we, um, through the chair, have we reviewed the plans uh, and shared that with developers that for that intersection? Um, you mean the, it's built on, you mean the... The changes that we put together with uh, Mr. Mastriani. Yeah. You have those based on the plans for and I'm looking at Phil. Is that project on hold or something? Are you talking about the, the, talking the signal? The, the signal and the changes with the turn lane, et cetera. That is um, the upgrade of the, inter the, the changes going to the intersection. Because isn't there what's mm -hmm. left to be done on the intersection? So um, they're showing. Are you showing the right turn lane? No. On onto Lumber Street. Okay. Right here. 
that. So yeah, the uh, the we've we've Beta has provided a design. Uh, Tyler has provided a design for that right turn lane. Okay. We've uh, subsequently uh, sent it to the town for review, so it's under review. Okay. By your engineer. Um, but it's only from the from the uh, Cumberland Farms driveway down. Right. Okay. Okay. Should the carry along tank would have any effect on the, the traffic flow since yeah. it's the furthest right. away. I just wanted to clarify that mm -hmm. and answer Frank's question. Clarification. Yeah. As some members maybe not were aware, is that for all the multiple projects going on, two or three boards ago, uh, we negotiated uh, upgrades and improvements to that intersection. So it just. Um, what is the timing on that? It's extremely slow, as, as David <laughs> pointed out. Phil, you said you submitted plans to the town, and it's under review. Yeah, okay. Okay. So um, a couple weeks ago. A couple of months. A couple months ago. Um, years in the making. Just a little more detail, just to cover it to and from West Elm Street, and then kind of follow up briefly the traffic flow within the site. Um, right. So. Because coming coming from uh, the west, uh, vehicles would would turn left into the site. Um, we generally expect them to use this side of the the fueling, or come in park in front of the store if it's just a convenience trip. Uh, coming from the east, uh, we would expect the majority of vehicles to travel through the intersection, access one of the two driveways to turn right into the site. Generally, stay on their side of the site, or again park in front of the store. Uh, similarly, uh, with, depending on the, the side of the site that you're on, vehicles seeking to travel back to the east, we would expect to, to come up the circulation aisles to exit onto Elm Street, travel around the site. Uh, vehicles that are parked in front of the store have their choice of if they're coming up to Elm Street to go to either side of the store, um, mostly based on just general circulation of the site. Uh, vehicles traveling uh, back to the west, back towards 495. Again, we expect to stay on their side, exit via a right turn, uh, and complete that maneuver. How many, because I, I know, Phil, you, you've mentioned the, the parking, but you have a lot of, how many parking spaces now on the site? I believe there's 12. 12. 12. 12. There's 12 oh, now. 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 I believe there's around 12 or 15. Okay. But again, there's no seating at the site Correct. now in anticipation. Correct. And it's it's uh, having using that the the station, it does get and knowing know. knowing the situation across the street, maybe yeah. a little bit of extra right. parking is a good idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we figure the twenty four plus if people just want to go in and grab the water, they're gonna be at the pumps and go in and do that. Right. So there's arguably a lot more and than that. And that bothers me, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm waiting to get to a pump and right. somebody's in there buying groceries for the week. <laughs> and the whole design. Having left their yes, car. having left their car when there's... Yeah, and the whole design is to keep the spaces right next to the building so you're not right. interfering with cir mm -hmm. circulation through the site. Mm -hmm. okay. To change just a real quick curiosity question, because that it's ironic that intersection shows the old golden spoon before the, the Starbucks just... So it seems like a much older overview. Mm -hmm. uh, Overhead view. I was just curious where you got it from. Google or no? No, that's uh, imagery that you can get online with MassGIS. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions on traffic flow from the board? Yeah. Any questions on traffic flow from the public? I did have just one okay. comment. Um, on the easternmost entrance, right there, mm -hmm. Uh, you may have mentioned it, the uh, developer may have mentioned about modifying the, the look of that. The, the shape of the, the island. The shape of the yes, island. We're, we are going to take a look at I that. I can envision people saying, oh, I missed the first entrance if I'm coming from the west. Oh, I missed the first one. Let me kind of yeah. get that second one. And if it's just like shaped like a square, they're going to say, I can make that. Whereas if I think you modify it a little bit with some curvature on both sides, that would really, I think, discourage we'll hang them up in traffic, and then there'll be a big accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea, Brian. We like that. Too. <laughs> but I, I think that you know, once people see that, they're going to realize they're going to have to go to Elm Street in order to kind of loop back around. Right. And typically, what's the height of that? 
middle section. Just you know, six inches. Six yeah. inches. Yeah, okay. it'll be mountable with sloped granite, just in okay. case for some reason someone comes in. Nobody or, would ever do for it. Mrs. Kramer no, in the but, SUV. Can we, can we put spikes in there for Mrs. Kramer? <laughs> <laughs> So to, to Frank's point, is that what Beta suggested to, to Richard, or what, what did Beta suggest? Yeah, Beta had, had asked to make the, that geometric piece a little bit more prominent, so we're, we're going to take a look and see what we can do. Okay. I imagine it'll be signed if it's not an It'll entrance. absolutely be signed and there'll be pavement markings as well, so it'll, it should be clear, but, but right to your but point, if there's more that we can do, then, right. then we will look into that. Okay, seeing no additional comments from the board or the public. Move to the parking lot design, which we basically covered, but if you want to just... Do Jesse, do you want to speak to Sure. Yeah. So as mentioned, we now have, there's three existing curb cuts with the facility, and then there's the one for the dwelling. So we went basically from four for the overall parcel to maintaining the four, but we've now got the entrances and exits aligned, as you see here. We'll have the right in, right out, as we keep talking about on this one and the full access on the back side of Home Street. This allows really nice circulation around the canopies on both sides, allows for easier delivery for fuel, and also we were able to put all the parking up against the build, up and around the building so that you have people that just want to use those facilities, have nice safe access to it so you don't have a lot of parking away from it than having to walk through access aisles. Uh, so we think we've, we've got it laid out the way it should be given the geometry of the site. Can you just explain, and for the public, because I know I actually had a somebody make a comment. When the truck delivers the, because you've you've shown it on the plan, but just pointed out, when the fuel is being delivered, where is the truck sure. going so to be? The truck can come in a couple different ways. Well, let's say they're coming in this entrance here. We have it designed so that they'll be able to circulate around and park over here. They have the fuel from the passenger side of the of the truck, but they'll be able to park right here, fuel, which still allow you to have good access for the temporary time that the truck is parked here and, and dumping the fuel off at the okay. facility. Whereas oftentimes, if you see that happen at some of the older facilities, those trucks are parking some of the main access ways in and out of the site, or maybe a, a, a main access going through the site. Um, you know, we actually even consider tanks here, which is very conventional, and you split it to be able to go to both of the canopies uh, but that would have blocked with fueling there the ability of anyone to back out of the spaces if they're at the front of the store. So at a premium to, to Global, they were willing to put it on one side, which requires them to go a great distance with those fuel lines to the opposite side can be. Okay, thank you. That's just a crosswalk marked across right. there. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Any questions from the board on? Through the chair? Parking lot design. I'll go to our fifth first and then because he just mm -hmm. looking where at that is that crosswalk going to? So you have a, a sidewalk now that goes across the frontage of the site. We're going to maintain that sidewalk and just bring it up in for ADA access. Okay. So you have that to the main entrance into the store. And there's like landscaping on either side of that crosswalk? Yes. You have two trees that kind of frame the sidewalk coming into the site. Okay, thank you. Frank? Uh, to David's earlier point, uh, if someone is walking from west to east on the Elmwood uh, side of the street out of the building, uh, they could walk off of the property and on the north side of the building there is a walkway. The gray is a walkway that's passable. Um, I'm assuming if they wanted to, they could, they could do that and continue on eastward. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as pretty as being all green on that side, but uh, it's still, you know, there's a crosswalk and more green, and it's it seems to be a nice walk if someone wanted to just daydream while they're on a break or something from that area. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the board? Any comments? I just have one comment uh, to the chair. I don't know, Tyler or Phil, if there are any comments from Beta on either the parking or even the traffic flow. I don't, I don't know if we. Yeah. Mentioned yeah, that. Mm -hmm. Since the resident expert is here, I just wanted to touch base and make sure that her. Hi, uh, for the record, Tyler DeRuder, Beta Group. Um, we reviewed their traffic impact study. Uh, most of the comments that we had have been brought up so far today. 
Um, I think they have performed the study in accordance with industry standards. So our comments are pretty much mostly on overall just safety in the area, uh, coming in and out on West Main Street. We know today that there's pretty historical queuing on that road. Um, so getting left turns in and out onto West Main with the queue there today, how do we do that in a safe manner? Um, we've asked them to take a look at that right turn in, right turn out. Um, I do think making it not so square, maybe triangular to sort of enforce, you have to turn right here, uh, would get the picture across better. Um, so they're looking into that and we are you know, looking forward to what they come up with. Um, in terms of access on and off of Elm, I think that's really the best way to go, get them out to the signal. Um, as long as that signal can withstand all that traffic coming out and then making the left at the light. Um, one of the other things we were concerned with was the left turns on West Main today in that lane. If they're going to make a left into the western driveway, how does that lane and the gore scraping that's there today work with all those vehicles turning left into that driveway? Um, so I know that they have, the applicant has provided a response today. We haven't had a chance to look at that in detail, but we will do so uh, as soon as we can. Thank you. And, and if I could follow up question. Yep. So the uh, Board of Appeals traffic impact analysis review, that is something that's in the works and not ready yet. This just came out today. So that's still in process. Beta, we've submitted a review letter, I think it was back in April, to the Board of Appeals. Um, and then the applicant has responded to that, which we received today. So in process. Yeah. Thank you. So may I yeah. share a follow-up comment on Frank? You made a comment, Tyler, about the light on Elm Street in Maine, the ability for that light to handle the additional traffic. Now, mm -hmm. right now it's theoretical. But occasionally in the morning, it does get backed up right to the stop sign there at Perkin Elmer. Mm -hmm. Do you under, so I'm cool. just, yeah, so I'm just a little concerned. I love the idea in terms of moving that flow, but I'm just a little concerned that it gets backed up when the light goes red, mm -hmm. you get five, six, seven cars, I could see it backing up all the way back onto Elm Street. Yeah, so they said in their study that the queuing that direction shouldn't be an issue much more than it is today. Um, we've looked at their numbers and there's not a huge difference between the no build, which is you know tomorrow with no project, and tomorrow with the project. Um, it might be something that they would need to keep track of in terms of if there's a ton of cars coming out that way, what does it do? Um, Similarly, with any redevelopment in that area, it's going to have an impact as well. Uh, there is a right turn overlap, I believe, at that intersection, which should help clear out some of that. Um, as far as I remember from the impact study, they would like to maintain all of the improvements for the intersection that were proposed from the development across the street. Um, so they're using, in their build, all of that is in there. So you have, it, it gets a little bit better because of those improvements as well. Okay. So a follow-up question. So the traffic okay. generated by the new project here is built on top of the traffic generated by the new Duncan project? Yes, they've included that and the development across the street. Okay, good. Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Um, as we've already mentioned, uh, in the north western cross street is uh, part of the new hotel overlay district. Um, are we taking? And it's obviously very. It's theoretical at this point. There's no proposals for a hotel. But did we look at any of the impacts from that? If they they did not look at any. I mean, because it's hypothetical, it could be anything. Um, so you, I wouldn't expect to hold the applicant to design for something that's way in the future that isn't known. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
guess we'll deal with that. <laughs> we have any comments the from the board? Comments from the public? Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Thank uh, I would like to ask Phil a question. Okay. I don't, it kind of crosses over from traffic to stormwater management. So well, why don't we, we open stormwater. stormwater and then we'll... Right. Okay, stormwater management is the next item. Would you like me to give you a brief overview? Yes, please. Sure. So as I had mentioned previously, we had done on-site soil testing to change the drainage design. We pretty much split it up halfway on the sites with two different approaches. To the west of the site, we have sheet flow coming off the pavement into curb inlets. We have two curb inlets, inlets on this side and two on this side that get it into a shallow sediment forebay, if you will, on both sides. Then I'll have to filter through a check dam. And then we have a second check dam, so I'll have to go through two filtering devices before I can get to the main settling area shown right here. Outside of that, uh, we have an overflow emergency weir, but then we have a low flow outlet pipe at the bottom of the basin. So as I mentioned before, so that you don't have standing water there for a significant amount of time. Uh, we've designed that such that pre-development runoff is not, is not uh, breached with post-development runoff, so that you have the stormwater guidelines met in that regard. Uh, we could not provide recharge in that area, so we had to increase the size of our recharge area from this side where we did have a better groundwater separation. So the runoff sent over here is going to go into these underground recharge systems that are connected to each other. Ultimately, uh, the runoff from those will go into an existing pipe that is on the site now that goes into infrastructure that heads uh, further north off-site. Uh, we have designed this to the maximum performance with the mass stormwater guidelines and we feel as though we meet all the regulations in town as well. Questions from the quick point of clarification. So I understand on the easterly side it's all going to flow north up into the existing piping. Can you go over the westerly side again? Sure. It'll go into those two curb cuts on the north and south and then flow west? To the into middle. There. Okay, right great. Here. Yeah, and then it'll ultimately discharge into the wetlands Thank where you. that runoff goes now. So we didn't change any of the drainage patterns. This is still open, I'm sorry, yeah. open in front of the CONCOM as well? It is, yes. Oh. Uh, it was well received. I, I think they were happy with the efforts that we've made since the last time we were before them and given the fact that we're going to take something that's in place now that is uh, severely under design and not performed properly, get rid of that and obviously put some improvements in its place. In the chair? It, there definitely will be improvements um, based on how it is now. Um, but there is an intermittent stream on that property, uh, the easternmost property. Um, it's underneath where that driveway is on your plans. And um, otherwise, I'd like to ask Phil's opinion on the issue with Elm Street, uh, where we're asked maybe for a sidewalk along that northwest edge uh, or what can we do there to make it better for the wetland what, or what's your opinion on, on that? So, um, so you, you're, you want to, the sidewalk along that? I think you'll concentrate on, on the western edge or the eastern edge? The western edge, northwest. All the, all the way over, Frank? Yeah. So not talking about, I think, less on the sidewalk, but talk about the condition with the, if the, the whole the stream. Condition. If there could be a curb cut, uh, I'm sorry, a uh, curbing to stop stormwater from rushing into the wetlands. Uh, if there could be a curbing and sidewalk, uh, is if that's possible. Uh, how should we handle, how should we look at handling that as far as stormwater management, uh, where it's pre-disturbed area and looking to make improvements. So, um, so there are uh, different techniques you, you can do um, for a sidewalk along a wetland. Um, the the challenge, like you said, the challenge is is once you've once you put in a curb, you're obviously restricting, and you, you're gonna 
most likely provide a, a, a point source discharge to to the well. Once you receive, once you do that, you have to provide the treatment uh, to meet the standards. Um, and it looks a little tight in that area, uh, unless they can obviously direct it to the um, their basin. However, that's also mixing. You're mixing municipal stormwater with private stormwater, and typically that's not a good position to be in. Um, so I think if, if, if it was absolutely necessary to provide a sidewalk there, you could talk to conservation and see if they could do wetland replication, do a BMP there or whatever. So um, if I can follow up, Frank, just on, is there any additional improvements? Because I think that's what, Frank, you were sure. looking at. Any additional improvements that you would make along that wetlands area beyond what the applicant has submitted? So we didn't review it uh, uh, relative <coughs> to any Nothing to do with sidewalks or anything like that, just. Like I said, we didn't review it relative to impacts for the roadway on that wetland. Uh, we just reviewed it for impacts on the, of, the site. Of the site on okay. the so I mean, so nothing additional that you would propose. You could, but I, again, I don't know if it's the responsibility of the. No, no, no. I'm not just. I'm, I'm talking about from the site, the typical review of management, where well, uh, water management. <coughs> Basically, what they have proposed, you wouldn't propose anything additional yeah I mean other than uh, the addi additional water quality units that we okay. would uh, for the for, to treat the level okay thank you thank thank you. You. chair Trail, before you sit down sorry mm -hmm. so along that line of question but different assuming there's no sidewalks in those two sections the center section and the westerly section um, would curbing work just curb to keep the salt and sand from the street going up onto the um, I'm not familiar with the street grading. Uh, so obviously if, if you're providing a restriction in terms of to redirecting stormwater, you wanna make sure that right. where, wherever the receiving end is, A, it has the capacity for it, and B, it's gonna do what you want it to do. Okay. I guess I just would ask the applicant on their thoughts on that as far as you had mentioned there's a couple of it's okay for you John. Yeah. there's a couple of uh like uh train trains there and yeah they're not on the edge of the pavement as you would expect they are across the street they're off in the shoulder area okay it's a relatively flat topo going through all along sure. this whole section it, it's but there's ones on this the south side as well is that what you're saying yes, or are they just from yes. the closest one i think there's one here and i don't recall another one going down that way until, yeah. So do you just plan on leaving it a flat connection between? Not changing. We're not changing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, if I could respond to, to David's question, um, and that, that is kind of my point. It's good that they're moving away from the wetland. The wetlands are a conservation commission concern. But as far as stormwater management, water in the street, as Phil's pointed out, is a municipal issue. Um, but. The change, all right, so CONCOM will look at that and they'll, they'll tell us their opinion. But the change here in the design is we're adding more green near the wetland, which is great, but I don't see any additional protections for stormwater being added in the plans that were being shown. And that's where my questions lie. And where's, What's the best solution? Well, I would like to see a sidewalk and additional things that added in here, if it's possible. Um, but still, that's more of a concom issue with the wetland on the the lighter green part of this map. On the darker green part of this map, um, we should be working with concom to find a, a solution. Working with Phil to find a solution that's best for the entire town. And if, I'm not saying mix municipal and, and private. But uh, there is no plan to stop stormwater from going into the wetland from the darker green section as it stands right now. And that's a concern for me. I'll, I'll just state that there's a high point right through here. So we've got a ridge line 
that we've created along the property line to keep our runoff from our project in our site and keep the town's runoff and the right of way on the town side. So anything that is referenced here in the dark green, we are taking our pavement and we are treating it to the maximum extent we can before it does discharge ultimately to the wetlands. So we Which is an improvement over the way it is now. Mm -hmm. sure. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Any further comments from the board? Any comments from the public? Bill? Um, I just want to make one more. So um, when we when we reviewed the site, um, the stormwater management was system on site was hadn't been maintained in mm -hmm. a significant amount of time. So as a result, we've asked that the uh, a special condition be included that a, a report from a professional engineer would have to be submitted annually, indicating that the maintenance is is going on. So okay. it's a little bit more than we typically require, but I think under the circumstances, mm -hmm. this is a gas station, the wetlands issue is right there. Um, so that's what we recommended to the. Conservation Commission. Okay, thank you. Through the chair, just follow up, Phil. Is that some? It sounds like a great thing that we should do for our gas stations. I was just curious if we did that for Cumberland Farm. Do you know? I was. I did not review that okay. project. So. Unfair question. <laughs> and there's okay. a full O and M plan for okay. all those mm -hmm. inspections and reporting as part of the package to you as well as the con con. Okay. Seeing no further stormwater management, let's go to lighting. Oh. If people haven't seen the lighting plan, it is a test of your vision, even in the yeah. size. <laughs> so a sub-consultant, Red Leonard, that can do a far better job at designing these than we can, because that's what they do for a living, uh, provided this design. Uh, as it was mentioned earlier, uh, lighting under the canopy can range anywhere from the high 40s down to around 20. You don't want to go certainly below 20, and that's on the outer perimeter of the canopy, if you will. Uh, then as you go through the site, we obviously want to make sure, as I mentioned before, we have nice, safe levels between the canopy and the building on both sides also within the parking areas and around the immediate perimeter of the building, which we feel is all this. I'm going to interrupt you a second. Just for people who are been looking at the plan, um, the lighting plan has a whole bunch of two-digit numbers on it, and that indicates the lighting level. So in case you are looking at it and saying what these numbers are, that's what it is. Go ahead, sorry. Sure. We were asked to take another visit on this design to see if we can lower the levels as uh, the lighting approaches Elm Street, Lumber Street, and West Main Street. So we did do that uh, from the last time you saw this plan, as I was mentioning. So right here at the existing edge of pave, but one of the egress points, we're down 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 1.4. But by the time you get to the opposite edge of pavement, you're down to 0.1. On this one, you're already down to 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 at the edge of pavement nearest to us. As you get to the sidewalk along <coughs> the street, you're at 0 0.1 or 0. And then moving to the front of the site, as mentioned before, you have the main egress off of West Main. You have 0 0.1, 1, 0 0.9. By the time you get to that center dividing line for um, traffic traveling west, you're already down to 0 0.1. Uh, same thing over here at the Edge of pavement, you're down to 0.8. By the time you get to the travel lane, you're down to 0.1. Uh, there was concern raised about the lighting here being 15, 14, 11, 12 within this travel lane. Uh, we don't think that is as big a concern from a safety standpoint. We can certainly have that looked at again by the designers to see if they can improve upon that. So that's what we'll do by the time we see it again. Before we go to the board, I'm going to ask Phil to comment on the lighting because you had touched on it briefly. So, um, unfortunately, when I submitted the uh, submitted my report, I, I actually provided, I don't know if it was included, the, the light levels, yeah, typical light yeah. levels. Yeah. I don't have that with me, but if you look on the uh, that sheet, um, 
There is uh, the foot candles is the first column. So you bef the the forty the forty uh, foot candles would be uh, between a, a overcast day and a very dark day. So I think as 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 was indicated, there's there's a need to be able to read the the the, the gauges, look at your card, make sure you know. So uh, that isn't uh, a, you know. Any any lower than that make it difficult for you to read um, read those things. So uh, I can understand uh, certainly under the canopy where you're going to be uh, doing those things. But but as as was um, suggested, you know outside of that canopy, especially on the far ends, in the middle between the the, the canopy and the building, two uh, three or four to five can four candles is, is probably more than enough. Um, Now, what's the requirement about spillage over the property line? So, um, I I don't have my my. It's it's different in each town, unfortunately. So, um, so I think they've got cut off uh, feet uh, cut off uh, fixtures that would. Re uh, Provide the uh, cutoff at the at the property line. When it when it comes to light um, spill it all over to, to streets, typically not an issue. We you you pr prefer to have a little bit of light, especially you know on the sidewalk sides um, okay. and stuff like that. Once it, you know you don't want to be spilling over onto private properties or residential um, units and and. It, doesn't appear that that's the case in this project. Okay, good. Thank you. And you want to just point out because it's difficult to see where the light posts are that are not related to the to the pumps. The other drawing's probably a little bit better. It's easy for you over there to see. It's not as easy. <laughs> <laughs> so the yellow, if you can follow the the yellow ones here. You have them around the perimeter of the site, so we absolutely have them at the entrance points. Um, then we have them along the front here, facing back towards the store. Again, the entrance point, and then one over here facing back towards the canopy, and then another one at this entrance over here. So for the planning board members, because we see everything black and white, um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six mm -hmm. along the West Main Street. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody see them? No, I don't see the six five and six. Are they on the corners? They're the center, on the corners. The yeah. center yeah. median. Yeah. We have four okay. right in that center median. Okay, thank you. And then you have one on the opposite side. Okay, thank you. And how about the back? I see the one in the northwest. So you got three over there. You got one over here associated with this canopy. You got one at the entrance, and you got another one at that entrance. Great, thank you. Okay. I want to thank Elaine for uh, providing these metrics for lighting. Um, something Claire would have liked a lot. Claire, Claire would know these terms by heart, but it gives us some metrics to be able to deal with the, the scale. So thank, thank you, Elaine. Thank you. Any other comments on lighting on the board? Is it to the chair? This is very general question is the lighting is the proposed lighting going to be significantly brighter than it is today less bright than it is today or essentially net net honestly I can't comment on the existing facility I've never seen a lighting design done for it I don't know how the levels look um, only driven by it at night I don't know how to kind of gauge it I can say what we're putting in here now is going to be updated it's LED uh, you're going to have what you see driving around if you see another facility like the Cumberland Farm that's more modern. That's what you're going to see here. That everybody's kind of doing the same thing as far as they all know what they need to provide for safety and with the canopies. They all know what they need for safety in and around the store. That's what you're going to expect if you're kind of trying to figure out. So maybe if you're standing there at night and you kind of look across the street at both of them, that should kind of tell you the, the upgrade. Add on. I was just going to say to add on to that. There's 
So obviously there's one building today with the pumps right in front of it. Here, there's really going to be three different entities here, so it's going to seem more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nature of the beast. Yeah. I'm wondering if Design Review looked at the type of lanterns or lights uh, along the front and back. <laughs> from, from the meeting last week, the design okay. talked about the 15. Yeah, they were the, the concerned with more about the, the correct, correct, the, yeah. more about the laying itself. We did. I don't think we got into. We recommended the gooseneck's lower light levels. Um, and just overall reducing the light you know, as much as you can. So it, it, you really feel like you need the 40 under the canopy. Is it, that might come down a little bit to try to get these levels here because as you can see, I don't even have any fixtures. I have this one over here, but I have nothing on this whole side right here to try to avoid having anything going uh, towards Lumber Street. So I would suspect they're going to have to adjust that down a little bit to improve on that on that side. Like, like we said, we can add more screening there, right? Yes, and that's the other thing. Lighting levels, it's not a perfect science. They can't take into account existing vegetation or proposed vegetation. So obviously I'm going to improve the, the landscaping on that side, which would have an improvement on any type of effect from lighting if you were along the home street side. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we haven't really talked about how the building itself will show. Um, and I'm wondering if you'll, since it's not intended for people to come in through the back, and the back is the most likely to impact neighbors and so forth, will that be specifically low-lit um, along the back of the building where there won't be an entrance and exit? So we will have a sidewalk that we did have a sidewalk on the back side of the building. Across the back of the building, yeah. yeah. So that's new. So we'll obviously have to have that there just for safety purposes. But also, um, I do just know. So we do have the gooseneck style lighting. I don't know if that was nice. On the building. So on the back side we have levels of three, two, five, two, six, you know, on the immediate sidewalk. But as soon as you get off that sidewalk into the grass, you're immediately down to the twos. And then by the time you're right here, you're you're already at point one at the property line before you can get to the edge of the pavement. So specifically the, the building itself isn't gonna be illuminated, the sidewalk is. You're gonna have Two fixtures on the back side. Uh, one right here at the immediately above an egress location. You have to have one above the door, and then there's one more. So there's only two wall-mounted fixtures back there. That's it. And and pointed down for the sidewalk purposes. Exit. Yes, full cut off. Everything okay. on the side is full cut off fixtures. Okay, thank you. Question about I guess lighting and then and overall. Maybe I missed it at the beginning, but um, gas is 24 hours a day, and the store is no. open. Yeah, the same as across the street. That's the proposal. Stores 24 hours a day, too? Okay. We, t we talked about it when you came in at first, and you were going to keep the hours the same. I thought it was gas 24 hours in the store. We, we asked to be treated similar as across the street, which is 24 hours. I specifically asked that question, and you asserted that you were going to be keeping the hours the same as they are today when you first came in. Yeah, I kind of, that's, I was asking because I wasn't sure, and I was remember, that's what I was saying. Uh, okay, let's get that, discuss hours, that yeah. on the hours of yep. operation. So, well, it does affect the lighting, have, so. Yeah. I do have a question about signage. Should we just add it to the list or talk about it now? Why don't we add that on building and screening? And we are just about out of time for tonight. And George, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yes. <laughs> Based on two of us not going to be here at the next meeting, because our turps are up or pursuing other Correct. activities. <laughs> um, or both. How do we schedule and make sure that this continues and <clears throat> et cetera? Well, I mean, it has to be continued no matter what. Right. So I think in the memo suggested, depending on the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, what that meeting date was. Obviously, the board may be different by the time this hearing comes around. and. The new members would probably have to watch that hearing, but okay. the board can decide to continue to a set date if the applicant is willing to agree on that date. Okay. So, a question: Would they be not voting members the new because 
they, I'm there's, been more, there's been more than one meeting that they would have missed. And you can yeah, for the Mullen meeting. waiver, I think they can only miss two. So well, it, it would have to. majority voted the board. Right. Right. It's not a special permit. Right. So, so, okay. so you'd have your yep. the five yeah, that you need. Right. right. Um, the other alternative that I learned at the class at Holy Cross <laughs> was that um, um, it, it would mean um, ending and starting again, but you could right. just present what has a already been, a one time what has yeah. already happened. If we that have brings, to go that route, we've that got, brings we've got the whole not, board okay. back mm -hmm. in, in, uh, okay. in play. In play. Okay. Can, can we take five minutes to show you the revised document? Yes, why don't we do that, okay. and why don't we, well, for five minutes, I think we're good. I was going to say open me. For the record, David Avery from Global Partners. So we had an initial review. We used our prototype building, and the initial review was that it was uh, maybe a little too contemporary, a little too bright. Um, so we went through particulars on the building and what we could do to uh, kind of soften it and allow it to blend a little more into the neighborhood. And so some of the things that we changed that were primary impact to the building was to the body of the building was white with board and batten vertical siding and we changed that to more residential clapboard siding uh, took the white and just used the white as a trim but went to a very soft green for the general body of the building we kept the simulated wood and the architecture and the shape as it was we took the tin ceiling that was on the mansard all the way around and complemented our neighbors across the street to a darker uh, roof material here. And we brought the, the silver tin-like for the hard awnings that are on the front. One of the other major things that we did was we had stretched canvas awnings that were over top of the patio space. And again, to just have a little more uh, residential feel to it, we created this pergola to capture that space instead of the awnings. And the awnings were blue, and um, we just thought this was a little more complimentary to the neighborhood. Some and though, that's the lighting fixture as well as in the back. Yeah, exactly, and I'll show you uh, one of the pictures. The overall space, as you see it there. And you got one in the back? Uh, I think we do. I think one of the ones I have. Oh, the on the back side. Right there. Yeah. yeah. And so you're, you're correct in saying this isn't an entrance, but it is a service store for our store partners that are going in and out. Um, so it does need to be lit. So there'll be a light underneath the awning and then the complementing light. So just through the chair, just note that neither one of those sidewalks will be there, right? <laughs> <laughs> it looks really nice. <laughs> uh, in the other discussion we had with the design review board is to add a few more windows on that left-hand side Yes. As well as the 495 side didn't have any, so we're looking at putting some of those windows on that side as right. well. Okay. That does look really nice with the sidewalk along Elm Street. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> so you want to just touch for a minute on what's going on inside so people know on, but, and I'm thinking about it in relation to the parking. Because yeah. there was a comment made on the number of parking spaces. Uh, probably the easiest way to think about it, if you've been across the street at Cumberland Fine, kind of that activity, that service thing is being part of this. Uh, in addition, we're showing 12 seats inside in, in 24 under the parole. Again, the concept being all those parking spaces immediately next to the building so you don't have to conflict with any traffic getting in and out of the store. Questions from the board? I was just going to make a comment. We had asked about the, the roof line being so it's square and modern in the back, and we were told that that helps screen the uh, the, equip the rooftop equipment. So, anyways, so we thought that was a better solution to screen the equipment. <laughs> but, 
the the mansard creates about a three and a half to four foot parapet. So it does manage and screen all of Which the is documents. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. okay. Any comments from the public? No, the utilities are underground. Yeah, and all the utility servicing the building are underground as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when can we continue this to? Um, we so are back in front of the ZBA on the 23rd, I believe. Okay. So, with the. Yeah, with the possible. Do you, are you anticipating that closing with the Zoning Board of Appeals? Because we had suggested continuing um, to the June 25th meeting, the Planning Board. What's the date? Continue it to June 25th was our That's recommendation. The first meeting in June? No, June 25th second. is the second meeting. Second meeting in June. Okay. For planning. Any way board. to do it on the first meeting? If, if you anticipate everything with the other yeah. boards being uh, completed. Yeah, I mean, the comments, are, if we get the comments from Beta, we don't see anything worth shattering in, in responding to that. Um, yeah, so as long as Board of Appeals is closed out, then. Right. So what's that, the 11th? The next Zoom meeting with them on the 23rd of May, did you extend that to May 20th? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Extend, yeah. So ours would be the 11th. Yep, we have available for time. Um, Taking John's job right now. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> we should also that coordinate with John. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bring it up to 9 o'clock. Yeah. 9 o'clock on June 11th. And will there be a meeting of CONCOM in between two? Ye yes. yes. Well, that hearing scheduled for June 5th. Yeah. Okay. So it'll be before that. Okay. So can we get a motion to? I'll move to continue this hearing to June 11th at 9 o'clock. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Or? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> Do we want to take a quick break? Yeah, We're just going to take a uh, quick break. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Continued public hearing, Maspinock Woods, West Elm Street, Garden Apartment, Site Plan Amendment, Maspinock Woods, Realty Trust. I do remember you. Yes, and Mr. Chairman, if, if I may, just for, for a second before we reconvene here, um, for those members of the public and in the viewing audience, tonight is the last meeting of two of our members of the board here. And on behalf of myself, as, as well as the other remaining members of the board, we would like to recognize the, the dedication and effort of both Ephraim as well as John. Uh, so thank, thank you very you. much for what you've thank done. You. Uh, you've been a great addition for a very short period of time. That's but nice we wish you luck. Uh, and I think what you brought to the board uh, really helped with the cohesiveness and the unity that it's been that we've been able to show. Thank you. Okay. It's uh, it's been an honor working with you all, and uh, I feel like I've made a bunch of friends. And uh, it's been an interesting experience. So we wish <laughs> you luck. <laughs> thank you thank very you. much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ferrari. Uh, you had some. Um, Pretty big shoes to fill, and I think you've done an outstanding job. Thank you. Of bringing together this board, um, making us all better, uh, and I think by your leadership, uh, wisdom, and efforts, I think we have grown individually as well as collectively. Uh, and to that, we want to say thank you. Uh, thank you. Frank, I think you have something for the chairman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for being the chairman for this past year, and also for your half decade of service to the planning board. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. You can get that a great later. That. Thank you. And I want to thank each and every member of the planning board. It's been a, a delight. And this concludes eight years of serving on town committees and being chair of a committee for eight years, not necessarily the planning board. And I know it was difficult for all of us this year, and I don't want to take too much time, but <coughs> It was, everybody had to step up. Everybody realized that we probably needed to put in additional work. And I think one thing that we brought is a clarity to the public. There was nothing behind the scenes. Everything was open. Uh, and that's the direction that, you know, was very clear that the public and the board wanted. 
so as somebody has said, and I think Fran just says, like making sausage. It may <laughs> not be, uh, maybe ugly at times, but um, what you see is exactly what the discussions were, no other background discussions, and that's one thing that I think we should all be proud about. That uh, it might have been painful for the applicants, but um. <laughs> I did want to say that um, I feel that something really important happened this year, and uh, and we do have you to thank for that. And it, it dovetails right off of that is that uh, this process has become uh, very much more in front of the public and very much more involved of all planning board members. Um, and that's not only important, but it's it, we're we're delivering better results. And I know that people are seeing every difficult step of the way but that is that is the best best way for it to happen and um, I've you. been proud to be part of this and I think um, you also get a lot of credit for making um, for building a team this is this board has become a really really terrific team I know that when I was leading a hearing and I, I gave that feedback to Cliff as he was leading his hearing is that um, we can count on each other everybody everybody pulls their own weight and and has the the uh, at best interest at heart for the whole process, and we have delivered very reasoned, reasonable, and defensible decisions, and that's something to be very proud of. Thank you. Yes. And thank you to the board. So I just have one quick request. Can you actually use the gavel? To <laughs> <laughs> nice. It doesn't make the lawn order sound. <laughs> thank that's you. Right. That's right. All right. So continued public hearing. And her fam, I've asked to, uh, since he will be, we don't expect this to go past this meeting, and he hasn't had the opportunity, so I've asked him to. Here we uh, go, Irvine. Just don't, just don't give him your gavel. So <laughs> I've been eyeing it, so since it came out. Uh, so this is a continued public hearing for uh, Maspinock Woods. Um, we're looking, it's a garden style apartment, uh, site plan review, uh, amendment, sorry. Um, I'm going to hand it over to the applicant. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Bruce Wheeler with Maspinock Woods. Uh, Wendy Walton is here with uh, uh, Art Form uh, Design, and you know uh, uh, Peter as well. Yeah, again, we filed to amend, as you can see in this plan, uh, three of the duplex units. Originally, we had four. We have not moved forward with the change to the other unit. So, what you're seeing now is just exactly what we're proposing to be the changes. We met with the design review board. Uh, they offered a number of comments. We've changed it. We met with them again the other night, and we'll let Wendy take you through the, the changes in, in the layout. Hi. Um, Wendy, welcome with our form architecture. Um, the first board we have up is the proposed changes highlighted in yellow. Um, the feedback that they got from the marketplace was that people were looking for some things that were slightly different. One was that some of these places here where these are widening out now on the back, those were sunrooms that were on the back of the building, and they meant that the sunrooms were off the master bedrooms. There was an issue with flow and light and stuff, so we made some changes to those. Um, I actually have two boards here showing them, this one in color, just highlights it a little bit better. Um, this one shows the topography, uh, the design, I believe the design review board asked that that be brought. Mm -hmm. So this shows just how the grading works here. Um, and I have an additional board here. The one, bit, the, the biggest comments we got from the first design review board meeting had to do with the backs of these, they felt they were a little bit flat. So we did set in some of these sunrooms a little bit from the back to provide a little more interest along the back elevation. And there was a good deal of discussion about this unit here, specifically number nine, because a neighbor came and spoke up, the person who bought this, and was concerned about how close this was to them now. So we brought a board today showing how that comes. So this is, is it right side up? So this is unit nine, which is this one, the nearest one to this abutter. And the two lines that it shows, the heavy pink line is the last approved version of this. 
and the green lines are what we're proposing. So you can see that we narrowed it a little bit at the front. This is about an 18 inch difference that you're seeing here and here. Slight change there. Um, the sunroom moved to the back. Um, little, the deck moved in there. And on both of these, this volume, this is what used to be the sunrooms that you had to come through a master bedroom for. So on this unit, it moved over here, and on this unit, it moved here. So that's the changes to that. Uh, one of the things I like to do is to give you the highlights and then see what the boards want to know. We have elevations, we have floor plans. You know, I don't know how much detail you want us to go into. I guess I'll come. This is the next one. So this is those units. This is a view from the front left of the version. Units 9 and 10 of our MW is the name of the design. This is the front. This would be the left elevation. And just to clarify, these are the latest ones. Yes, yes. these are the Taking proposed. Taking into account the design review. Correct. Okay. So this is the left elevation, meaning the elevation of proposed changes to Unit 10. And then this would be the right elevation, which is the proposed changes to Unit 9. Um, you can see that the backs of these are staying low as they were in the prior um, change. It's really just a little bit of a shifting in the floor plan that we're looking to do to address feedback they got from the market. Um, do you want to see all the elevations for all three buildings? How do, you, how do we want to spend the time? I think it would be useful if we could see um, the difference in the the right elevation and left elevation, uh, so we can see what the, as compared to what was originally approved. Uh, we did bring the prior elevation. Yeah. We have that. We have that. Yeah. Um, Bruce has that. The, the one thing to point out: the original plan that we filed with you folks for all the units had a, had a sunroom off the sides. Mm -hmm. The the unit nine facility now is taking that sunroom and moved it around the back because okay. of the comments from the water. And we've taken that, whatever it was, 10 to 12 feet extension off the right hand side and moved it around the back. So to be clear, the, the new owner of number nine had the comments, is that? No, the, the owner sorry. of eight. So I can speak to that a little bit. So they did. Nine hasn't been built yet. So I apologize. The, okay. the owner of eight is here They're tonight. Here. Uh, okay. right. This was brought up at the design, the last design review right. board meeting, and, and you can correct me if I misspeak at all, but um, there was some concerns about the distance between the two units, and that was not what they were assured when they bought the unit. So the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the, the abutter and the developer have worked together to come up with a, a solution, which is nice to hear. So the unit, um, this is unit eight right here, Okay. and this is unit nine, yep. so that's the, the distance between these two was the topic of the design. And basically this, how see how this one has um, a sunroom on the side here, that was on this one, yeah. and to address those concerns we moved back to back. I gotcha. Okay, gotcha. This back away, and the two elevations, so here is what we are proposing and the right, where did it go? I just had it. Right elevation, right elevation. All right, so this is what the right elevation was originally and this is what we're proposing right now. Okay. I'm sorry, I, the <laughs> project manager, but there's no feet marked on those. Or is there, or I can't see it from this distance. Can you read what it says underneath the right elevations? Oh, it's the scale of this is is quarter inch. Oh, so it doesn't say the doesn't say the uh, elevation. Is it changing? Um, we're using the word elevation here to mean the le the right facade. There isn't a significant change in the height of the building. So this height is staying the same. This height staying the same. It's a very minor change there in in actual height of the building. Is there a change in the height of the building? The ridge has not raised. No. No. As a matter of fact, as you can see, these roof lines here are actually lower now, down here. So there is or is not a change in the height of the building? 
I would have to go find a scale and measure it to give you an exact number. There is not a substantial height change. It's still the two levels, so the ceiling height you had involved is the, the same. Okay. I have a question about setbacks and um, um, distance to um, the lake because it seems like they're building clusters of the lake on these than originally planned. And partly when there's changes that are after the fact, uh, a lot of details like that get lost in the mix. So here is the one showing the topography. Uh, and let's see, this building being one of the closest ones in here, the pink was the prior. Um, so yes, there is about a three foot difference right here in this one on the back of that building. Just for unit nine. Just for unit nine. And that's, the, the rest actually come in a little and that's because of this change to move it right there. To the project manager, um, can you show us a, a plan that shows the uh, 50 foot and 100 foot buffers from the lake? This is the wetland line here. Um, yeah, it so it's more than, what's the distance from the lake? I think that's the point, Frank, you're trying to get at, roughly. It's... I was thinking, yeah. is this side of the existing approved grading, so okay. we're not encroaching any further development-wise than, than what was there. Yeah, it's well, yes, the same limit of work. Um, it's... Uh, approximately 100 feet. It's, it's within the same limit of work. Here, here's the wetland line, and we're uh, uh, we're this distance. But now here's the scale. Uh, 40 40 feet is an inch. Um, so uh, we're, we're we're over 100 feet. I don't see that. What I think we need is um, when there are changes. Uh, that either go up to the buffer or into the buffer or not or outside the buffer they should be shown on, on a plan where the buffer is and we, we don't have that here mm -hmm. and we've had it on previous pr stages of this project um, I think it's required um, uh, what, what we show and you can see this dashed line all over on the site that's the limit of work that's been approved and we're within the existing limits of work. So there's no other further conservation commissions are not okay. increasing or affecting any interest of the Wetland Protection Act because again, we're outside of that. And if Bruce said you're over 100 feet from the wetland, but it's in an area we've already been approved. So, well, let's, let's re just review that for a second. I'm sorry. There's if I can make a suggestion, Frank, I think ongoing you have a very good point and maybe have new applicants do it but I think to retroactively change the way we've been doing it. No, 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 yes. I'm, I'm not saying we're not retroactively changing. These, these are our requirements. They're, re they're retroactively changing what we've already approved. But what I'm saying, how do we verify what the, the changes are? And, okay, looking at the map now with the dotted line, which is a black and white one, and it shows the limit of work, which is within, with the outside of the 100-foot buffer, yeah. that makes some more sense to me than previously. As soon as it focuses in for a second, come on, <laughs> technology. So this shows the previous approval for nine and ten. Um, so through the chair, give me a few seconds, Frank. Yeah, sure. Um, so what is the distance? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let him ask his question. Okay. The distance, the green is the the new on the chart in the back, right? Yes. So what's the difference, what's the distance between the, the green and the red? That right there is two, approximately two feet. three feet. Three this feet. is 18 inches. So here. the point I would make is they're stating they're still within the building area. Even if they weren't, it's only a difference of three feet. It sounds like both the applicant and the abutter have worked out agreement. I don't think we should drag this on. I think we should just move forward with it, in my opinion. I, th I think we should also respect you know, previous decisions um, that we had a work area that was approved. And 
so long as they maintain um, activities within that area, uh, that you know, we, we shouldn't uh, retroactively go back and try to change that. Mm -hmm. Again, they're outside the buffer zone, um, and they're outside, obviously outside the wetland zone. But just to reiterate John's point and Frank's point, Frank, you do bring up a good point that it's something that we have to be very careful about because setbacks are important. So, like John said, yeah. note it from, and move forward. Yeah. So, so my question is this: on the black and white chart that we have right now, uh, there are smaller dashes and the darker dash. The darker dash is the limit of pre previously approved. That's, yes, that's the limit of work uh, that Wendy's pointing to. Oh, right. And these smaller dashes yeah. here, if you're referring to those, those are the contour lines. Those are, mm -hmm. those are showing a, a slope to the land. With the, this is the retention pond right. right here. And this is the limit of work, this dashed line that goes around. Um, and in the back of nine, we're still um, 80 feet from the limit of work we're on our side of the retention pond. We're, we're 80 feet within the limit of work. And we made it about three feet deep. When it's within the buffer, which they're at 20 feet within the buffer, that requires a little bit extra attention because they're going three feet further into the buffer. Um, but it, it's not in the buffer. You've got no, this you one, you're 60 buffer. feet to the edge of the limit of work and then 70 to 80 feet beyond that. Right. I think they're outside the buffer. The buffer is yes. only 100. Yeah, exactly. they're not exactly. yeah. But I think your point's well taken that um, you know we should see that. But I think in this case, because it's already been an approved um, work area, that what are the setbacks that are required between these buildings? 35. And the old plan showed 35.5. The new plan shows. Date, update, update. 355. 35.5. Okay. So it's really the angle that's changing, moving. Okay. So from the viewpoint of the architecture, it's all the same materials, everything else. It's really just the shifting of that, that either an addition of the sunroom from the front side on this, on the left hand side, or again, shifting it around the back. Okay. Any further discussion? Yes, I'm sorry, I have so many questions. The color chart showing the white buildings are the ones that are already built, and the color ones are the ones that are not yet no. built. Um, built? These, I believe, are built. Never built. Um, this one is not yet started. The permit's is, filed. It's filed, I believe. These have under like construction. The started. Under construction. They're, they're well under construction, and then these, these two are, are constructed. So uh, the only two white ones where there hasn't been activity is is these two, the in internal ones. Thank you. So with the exception of Unit 8, there's no abutter to the units that we're changing. Okay. Okay. Any comments from the public? No? So. Mm -hmm. so Question of order: Are we? Is this a vote, or do we need to vote on this? We do need to vote on this, and I am not to impact the vote because I think this is a. But I just want to bring up and remind the applicant when, and I was trying to actually find tape when you guys came back last time as you were walking out. The former chair and his wisdom addressed looking at the parcel on West Elm Street. And in effect, it's probably gotten worse as a dump site. So I'm requesting to the applicant that for the benefit of the neighbors and also to the benefit of people who might be buying, <laughs> is that, that passing, it's, it's this one yes. down here, okay. is that it's the entry to not only a neighborhood, because I go in that way if I want to bypass because mm -hmm. I'm on that side. But also to your houses, it doesn't represent you well as a developer. And I want to also say that the former chair mentioned, and I don't want to, is that if you decide to take that house down and do something more in line with the rest of the development, is do bring it up in front of the board. I don't know how the board will react, but that invitation was made 
uh, to do it. But I think it's gotten a big pile of dirt. I passed it on the way yeah. here. And it really should be cleaned up. Yeah, we, we will clean it up. We'll remove any uh, fill material on site. And we have a, a trailer that was there temporarily. We'll remove the trailer. Um, and we'll um, and clean up the we, house. <laughs> well, just we we were we could demo the house okay. and leave the foundation yep. and uh, um, uh, it, but if the board would prefer to see the new plan prior to that, we we are willing to do either one. Okay. We're willing to demo it now, keep the foundation in place, just to remove the eyesore. Uh, or uh, we, over the next 60 days, can work on design and come back to the board uh, with that. It's, it's whatever your preference would be. I think we'd like to see it, wouldn't we? Yeah, yes. I, might have to I think it would be yes. front, yeah. yeah. But in the meantime, if you could clean yeah, any of that, like clean it up. We would like to see the plan yes. before okay. you so demolish. We'll so we'll be back uh, in, in a couple of months with that plan to show some more. I would like a time certain when that lot would be cleaned up, though. I appreciate that you will Within do it. 30 days. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Sorry to bother you just for a second. Heidi Edwards, Unit 8, Maspinot. Um, since I couldn't see with the angle and, and everything, yeah. I just wanted to, I was there at the design review board the other night, uh, meeting the other night, and I just wanted to confirm that the setbacks from you know the angle away from us are being met at. Uh, Can you read those off, Wendy? Do you mind reading those off for the blind person in the, no. <laughs> in the back? The, uh, the setbacks between the no. units eight and nine. This one. Yeah, yeah, it's on the. It's on the board. On the, it's on the think, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Thirty-five so five. So over here we have thirty-five five at the front, and we have at this point right here. I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing. Right there. That is 42, and then at the back, it's 60 foot 5. Perfect. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. I like the word perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We take a vote. Make a motion. Make a motion. Mm -hmm. Anyone have a motion to? I make a motion to uh, approve the, the new design changes for the um, three buildings. One second. All in favor? All discussion? No, oh, discussion. <laughs> Um, I don't know if we can add something in there, but just to your point about the cleanup, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to specifically have that called out to some degree. And I don't know if there's anything else on coming, coming back on the, the other uh, site, on the uh, Elm Street site, um, within, what you said, 60 days or so? Thir thir oh, well, uh, so the building. clean up within 30 days, and uh, uh, I would say approximately 60 will be back with the design. 90? To is share. That, 90. We can say 90 as a, as a hard number, hard, hard 90 number. for uh, uh, design uh, to, to share with design review board. Yeah, we'll start with the planning board and see where it goes from there. So would we want to do a conditional approval, um, approved conditioned on that we get those uh, that, that the site's cleaned up? As long as that won't hold us up getting building permits because we're going to stop yeah. on that. Right. I think that the, the, the new construction in, in West Elm, I think that's a whole different Right, piece. it is. But right. we, we can certainly, if we want, we can give you a letter that says we'll, we'll stop the cleanup yeah, in that law. Yeah. I, I'm meetings. comfortable with I'm up, the I'm assertion up. in the meeting. I mean, we all know what you we've agreed to, so I you know I appreciate that. Okay. I don't think it necessarily impacts what they asked for tonight. Um, I but I do okay. agree that it's your responsibility and it would be nice for that right. to happen. It'll, it'll yeah. be in the we minutes. agree that it needs to be done as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Project Chairman. Sure. Any other discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well Thank done. You. Good luck. Make sure we close the hearing. Yes. Oh. Yes. Uh, At least I get to close get one out. Second. Oh, uh, second. Second. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstains? Okay. Next item is not a public hearing, but it's a discussion. Williams Wilson no. Wilson Street Legacy Farms North. We have um, the Wall Street. Oh yes, sorry. Wall Street. Uh, Buckland. 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 Public hearing. Buckland Street and Leonard Street, from Water Management Permit Application. I'll move to open the public hearing. Make a motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 
Oh, I forgot to say I, but I meant I. Okay. <laughs> the applicant here. Come on. Wall Street? Yeah. Come on up. Can I just say yeah. for the purpose of the public, we did receive a letter with a request to, to read it out loud. I don't think that we need to do that. We do key things in the public record. Um, so we do have it. We've all seen it as part of the package. and. The, public at large is able to access it. So point, point of process here, is the applicant aware of the letter that we received from our attorney? No. Have you seen the letter from council? From town council? Have you seen it? No. We have a copy here. Okay. Uh, Georgia, you want to briefly talk about kind of related to a the little. letter and where we are and before we go further into this? To see what the kind of more on the are. hot seat. Thank yeah. you. Um, oh, you're welcome. Welcome. <laughs> and I also apologize because I'm not. I am new for people in the audience, so I may not have a good background on the process so far. But we did receive a stormwater management permit application that um, the planning department um, reviewed and determined that it was incomplete for a certain number of reasons that were listed in the memo. Um, some things were missing, and then there was. Um, some discussion based on the determination of um, being considered subdivision control law and the basis of an A&R or not. So included in the letter from town council explains their reasoning and their suggestions for um, how to kind of review the application considering that a number of items, big items, were missing. So why don't you touch on those two directions? Yes, the direct voting directions. You mean, or uh, either voting or. Yes, sorry. Hold on one second. I have so many things open. Um, so notice in the memo that the um, the planning board has a couple options that they can decide. Um, most recently, the letter from the town council had suggested that. Um, that the applicant withdraw their permit, and if they refuse to do so, it recommended the planning board deny the application um, under the termination that a definitive subdivision control plan is required. Um, there's so, a lot more detail, but I, yes. I, I apologize, but I don't know off the top. Oh, you did fine. <laughs> okay. um, if, if my understanding is correct, um, the the decision of 1998 is is apparently um, not supportable by the current town council, and it. Um, the paper street does not enable um, the argument to not have a subdivision plan to have the approval not required. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Well, no problem. Um, so without, so your two choices are to withdraw and then come back with everything that's necessary, or we can deem before discussion that there's not enough information provided and deny the application so comment i would suggest that um, we advise the applicant to choose the first option which is the correct way to do it withdraw mm -hmm. the stormwater permit request and, and do a proper um, subdivision being that the paper street does not qualify as a um, point of access I just read from the letter for the purposes of the public. It is clear from case law that has emanated from the decision to interpreting the exemption from the subdivision approval process found in general law section chapter 41, section 81 LC, that a way in existence for purposes of clause C may not be merely a plan proposal or quote, paper street unquote, but must in fact be a quote, physical way on the ground unquote. And then they list uh, a bunch of um, case law that has set that. Yes. So, um, I understand the board's position relative to the um, rights of the Paper Street. We respectfully disagree with the town council's opinion. We have uh, had discussions with town council. My council is preparing its legal opinion relative to the rights that we have in the Paper Street and the 
um, requirements that we're um, to follow in order to um, be eligible for an ANR endorsement of a plan. Um, if the board does not want to discuss that application until we have further discussions with town council, then I would suggest that we continue the hearing until the attorneys uh, have a chance to discuss the issues. Quite frankly, I mean, the option for us, if the board were to decline it, I mean, we had the option of submitting an A&R plan when we submitted the application for stormwater management. We didn't feel that we, it would be appropriate to put the board under the pressure of a 21-day decision-making process to sign that plan. So we withheld that plan so that we could have a discussion about the other more important issue, which is the stormwater management of the road that's built there. Um, so I, I don't want to get into a lit litigation situation because, quite honestly, the attorneys don't make the decisions, the courts make the decisions. Right. And so I think it would be better for the two attorneys to get together and discuss their varying opinions because we, I've used notice from 1998 that we did have an opinion from the prior town council that substantially is different than what the present town council has uh, reflected in his letter. And I'm, I don't even have to read the letter because I know essentially what that position would be. 20 years later, I think yeah. that well, I mean, we aren't going to have a chance, we aren't going to decide anything that opposes what our current town council Yeah, we can't says. take any action that town council I'm, has. Understood. And I'm not asking you to right. do that at this stage of the so, game. But we are, the law hasn't changed, the case law hasn't changed, and you know, I've had it reviewed. We'll present that information in a legal opinion from our attorneys, Rackham and Sawyer, and uh, we'll let the two attorneys decide how they want to approach it okay. with respect to so I'd, I'd the make a motion. endorsement. Sorry, I'd make a motion to continue the hearing. Can we continue it? So you can, we can extend the ac action date as long as the board and you agree upon that, um, okay. and we have to file with the town clerk, and then once we find that time, that's an agreeable time for you to get all the information that is missing for the yeah. application to make it complete. That's what kind of what our legal counsel sent us about. Um, it just says the board may give the applicant further time to supplement the application if the applicant is agreeable to the extension date. So that's kind of vague, but if the boards agree. Okay. Ask a question. Is there a concern about we're, uh, three board members will be changing next week? Uh, mm -hmm. Is that a concern, or we still have enough to vote on it sure. if we continue it? What, what it Excuse me, uh, just that. What is the requirement for a stormwater permit? Is it a simple majority? Or is yes. It yes. And how many members are there? Seven? Nine. Right. There will be seven. Nine, nine members, wow. Yeah. Hope you all get along. Um, two missing, so and two of us are not are leaving. Question about process. So I think we can continue the hearing without asking them for the additional. Um, Documentation. Yeah, because you get. I think you get that one continuance, but we would have to reopen again the hearing and talk about how the application is incomplete. Right, but I think that by gives us time oh, for, for the, the moderator so that they the, the attorneys can work out okay. mm -hmm. which way they want to go. And I'm just trying to be res when I made the motion. I just want to try to be respectful of our schedule tonight, right? Because we're 15, we're 15 or 20 minutes behind yeah. schedule. And to that to that point, I think. He hasn't read this yet. Once you do read it and your attorney reads it, I think it, it's it's not that much time that will be needed. So uh, I, I concur with David that we should continue and uh, find a date that's workable with you. Yeah, well, I don't know what your, the board schedule is, but, you know, someone in the vicinity of 30 days out or whatever. Yeah. So June 25th, June 20th. Yep. 611 or 625? Seems like 611 is kind of full. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. 625. 625. Yeah. Time flies. And there's seven of us here tonight. Only five of us are continuing. Oh, it's right. 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 Only five of us oh, are continuing. So you need well, those five. If you want to, in the interim period, re advertise it after the, uh, yeah. uh, after the election, you have the town election, then all the board members would be eligible <laughs> at that point. So we'd be happy to pay for another advertisement. To, okay, yep. to make that okay. process yep. work better. Okay. Who's making the motion? Oh, we have okay. to extend the decision date as well. Okay. To um, 
June 2nd. Okay. So you want to, to move the hearing to June 25th at what time? No, well, it's right over. How about 7th? Oh, 7th. Yeah. And the decision date to July 9th. Just in case. Nine. Yeah. July 4th of July. 4th of July. July 9th. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. That's right. Second. Okay, second that motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, so carry. Great, thank, thank you. you. Do you require anything in writing from us, or do you want us to send it to you? Just in, the just, just in blood. <laughs> if you could send us an email that you agree I'll, I'll, I'll to an extension. To right, great. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Very and now, uh, do I understand correctly that there is no review that's taken place on the plan that was submitted? Correct. Uh, no. the stormwater? No. Correct. Will, will that take place in the interim period? Because really, so I, for me, speaking for myself, the attorneys will have to would have our town council will have to agree that that was appropriate. When the application is deemed complete, that's when it okay. triggers the review period okay. from our consultants. Okay. Okay. All right, great. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Wilson Street. Okay. This is not, this is not a, a public, not a public hearing, hearing. This is no. just a public meeting. So, um, Roy, Mr. McDowell, would you like to tell us what's happened? Did you sure. meet today? I did. I met with okay. Bill. Yeah. And I thought we would love more. like to introduce yourself. <laughs> Roy McDowell representing Legacy Farms LLC. Thank you. And I have somebody who's with Paul like to say like this. And Ms. Kramer is going to. Yes, Ms. Kramer is. So I, I spent some time last week with uh, Michael Dryden from Polar Engineering. Mm -hmm. We walked the length of Wilson, a portion of Legacy, and you'll notice there's a pink line down at Wilson. Mm -hmm. And but more importantly, you'll notice in the upper corner, there's a green area. And you'll mm -hmm. see a, a large pink area. A mm -hmm. um, couple of things we found out. One, and we watched the water flow on a rainy day. At the bottom on Wilson Street to the corner of Legacy North, there's actually a catch basin on the street. And we've discussed this before. What happens is the water just runs right by it. it serves no purpose. Matter of fact, Phil and I looked at it today, and not only does it look clogged, we can't even find the outlet pipe for that. So at some point, that's going to have to be cleaned, oh, and, so and the well. outlet pipe is going to have to be traced. I can't tell you if it goes over the gas company or where it goes, but I think it should be relatively simple to find it. Okay. Once it's exposed, because it is backed up, there probably should be a head wall put in and let it flow naturally. So that's number one. Uh, number two. Uh, the area that I've marked in pink, which is actually on our property, that was part of the work that was done in conjunction with the town with um, Ludlow Construction when they built the road. And there's a retention area there that holds water. And when neighbors at one point made a comment that they thought some of the water was flowing off our property, I actually think they were right. Um, we study that closely and you can actually see in a large storm where water in fact would come over the edge because you can actually see remnants of it coming out to the road and of course then it would head down towards Kruger. So there's no question I think in certain storm conditions that's actually been happening. So in discussions with Bowler, we believe that that retention area should be enlarged. 
probably as much as 50, could be 75%, I don't know. I've got them running the calculations now. We're also going back to VHB, who did the original design, to find out what their calculations were, because we believe in a heavy storm situation, it's not adequate. So I should have information, I would say within a week or so, as far as what that needs to be, and so we'll work on that. Uh, getting back to the drain in the street, Phil and I looked at it today, and I think the asphalt outside of that drain on Wilson Street needs to be taken up and recontoured. So when the water, there's probably an 800 foot run from the top of the hill where the gas company has a couple of drains, but there's zero drains along that edge. So the water needs to be picked up, diverted into that catch basin, the drain cleaned, the pipe exposed, there's a number of pieces. So that's part of it. The other part is Phil and I walked up Legacy North and we haven't put the finished coat on yet. So in some areas, in fact, the grass is slightly higher than the road. So what's happening is some of the water is running down the street itself. So what we're going to do in conjunction with a number of other things, we're actually going to lower that grass in some areas. So it, in fact, the water does shed into the swale. So I think it's a combination of things that we believe need to be done to uh, make the situation better. Okay. Um, Phil, yeah. thoughts? So, um, uh, I think uh, the, the situation in Wilson Street is, is such that the stormwater management system is, is not adequate for, for Wilson Street. Um, there are four, about four catch basins up by the LNG driveway, and then it's about an 800 foot span before you get to Wilson Street. Um, and there's, there's like, like uh, Roy said, there's a catch basin there, but it, it doesn't look like the water can get to it because over time, uh, pavement ruts and so the, the, the water probably flows right down where the, the, the tire groove is, and it's, it's slightly higher on the other side, so it goes by. Also, the, the cross slope in Wilson Street isn't very defined um, at the intersection, so both at the intersection and a, a period uh, further down Wilson Street, so the water crosses can can cross the street um, in, intermittently, which is not good because then it freezes, et cetera, it causes issues. Um, so, so th th that's another issue. And then there's there's no no formal drainage from Wilson Street, and there's no opportunity for the water to get off the road until you get past Kruger Street, which is probably about a thousand feet down the road. Um, and, and as, as Roy said, probably just about right at this area is where his swale overflows into the, into the street. So adding more drainage and that too could cross the street. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's, 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 and as Roy said, there's a good portion of, of, of Legacy Farms Road North that comes down adds more flow to it. Um, so if we're able to reduce the flow coming this way, reduce the outlet from this basin, and also allow the basin here to actually capture um, flow. And after you left, I did find another basin about halfway up here that was completely buried. So obviously you're gonna maintain the, the drainage provide maybe some a, a pavement lift for through the intersection to keep it on the road and also uh, so there's a number of changes that could be made um, to improve the situation okay. so so with that being said we'd be very happy to work with the DPW on the drains that are on the street because that's public property but I think we can assist them in not only getting them clean but identifying where they're going because if they're in fact clogged and backed up, they're not going to serve much of a purpose. So I think identifying the head walls, 
cleaning the pipe, cleaning the catch basin, uh, increasing our detention area, and uh, addressing the shoulders along the edge of legacy so the water is truly shedding off. I think that's going to take care of a significant amount of this. The one thing that uh, Phil did mention, those will do a lot significantly to, to the health of the situation, but it's not going to make it perfect only because the street itself is not. The street is not properly pitched, so you're still going to get a certain amount of water going down that street in a swale fashion because, as Phil mentioned, the tires from the cars have created a sort of a swale in the road itself, so just even rainwater is going to be concentrated as opposed to shedding one way or the other. But we think it'll be significantly improved. Does anybody on the board have any questions? Just a quick so question about the swale that you're going to increase the size <coughs> of. Is that just a natural, um, what's, what's it made of? It's, it's a field right now. Okay, so it's just a grass area. Yeah. No more trees coming down. There are no trees there. Perfect. <laughs> Are we going to have a, <clears throat> a way of evading the water that's coming off the uh, LNG facility, uh, the, the, the pink line that you have there? Is any of that going to be caught? They have, they have two catch basins in front of their driveway, one mm -hmm. on either side. How much of the water goes in them, I don't know. Phil had just mentioned from there, halfway down towards uh, Legacy, he found another drain which is backed up. So that. If the, if the pavement is properly swale, that'll pick up a portion. And then, of course, <clears throat> you get the one down by Legacy itself. If that pavement were properly contoured, that'll pick up more. So you, you're picking up significantly more than, you're picking up nothing right now. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. those would be an improvement. Do we need some kind of pitching on the road in order to direct the water in there, even after it's cleaned out? Yeah. Well, you're well, going to have to count some of the pavement in, yeah. in, in the general area and then recontour it to the drains. Mm -hmm. So to prevent the, the sheet flow over the road, you, it should be, it should be uh, regraded. It should, mm -hmm. it, it, you could do cold plane and overlay, which is typically how, how we do, you know, reshaping a road lease. Mm -hmm. um, so we cold plane the edge and then provide a, a uniform and, and slope, slope the pavement to the gutter. So mm -hmm. it keeps it from crossing the road. But you'd also have to, in the gutter, make sure that there's some place for it to go. Right. There, like I said, there's, no, <coughs> there's, no, there's no, no place for the water to go from here all the way past Kruger on the edge, on the edge of the road. It's, that's a long way for, for runoff. So. We can't see that. Oh, they can't see that. It's a map. You're saying from here to here, we can't see it. You don't have, you're not you're using this projecting. The camera. Usually camera. you're projecting. Thank you. That's the camera guy. There you go. So what I'm saying is the the green is the current uh, swell and detention area. We don't think, given what we've seen in the field, and I think for your observation. No, we got a picture right here that well, shows. I, 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 I'm agreeing. Okay. What I'm saying is, in a heavy rain situation, this has a tendency at the very end to overflow. We think that needs to be. There's a stream that's been created that goes. So, you know what? No back and forth. I'm definitely going to hear from you, though, okay? But no back and forth this way, not at the mic, okay? We were on. Yeah. I just wanted to ask Phil a question while I was up there. Yeah. Okay. So, Phil, you, you were talking about the water coming down Legacy North Farm and missing that drain and doing some things to perhaps hit the drain. I just wanted to ask you, would curbing in that little section help direct it into the drain? So, so actually the Legacy Farms Road North is designed to sheet flow off into a swale adjacent to the road. And it's, it's based on elevation. Right now, they are only a binder course. So they've, they've installed the binder, but the, the, the top course, which is another inch and a half or two inches of pavement has to go on. And once you put that on, it'll, it'll get over the, there's, there's a, a, a earth, the earth, the loam and seed is too high. Right. Relative to the binder course. We're going to take care of that. So, so yes, yeah, through the moderator. 
so yeah, I did hear Rice saying that, but I was thinking at the very section where you have the drain itself, <coughs> you wouldn't be concerned about the water running off into the grass. You'd want to get the water into that drainage area. Maybe curbing would help. There. No, actually, the curbing would do just the opposite because the way this is designed, it's designed to sheet flow over the edge of the grass into the swale the entire length. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower that grass so in fact the water can sheet flow into the swale. Through the project manager. So that makes sense with the low in the lid stuff, right? Go yeah, off correct. the road in there. But this is not a lid thing. There's a drain there, right? So you're trying no, to no, get no, that's that's a yeah, so different things. Things. the drain's in public way. Right on the corner of Legacy <laughs> North and Wilson, right? No, right so there. Yeah. What, what, what we're well, put this aside for a minute. What we're talking about is along here. Yep. We want to shed the water this way so it comes down like this, comes around and eventually ends up here. And of course, this water is going to go, go into a drain here. Phil mentioned there's another drain a little further up, which is going to get sure. exposed. So the idea is to get this water to come down to here, but has a sufficient retention area, detention area, so that it over time can work itself into the soil. So yes, I totally understand that, and that's much up way much higher than I was talking about, but there is a catch basin right on the corner of Wilson and Legacy North. So Correct. that was my suggestion about curbing right there, maybe those five feet to and help I, the and water. I, and I think that he answered your question. That's exactly where it would work the opposite of how you hope it will work. Okay. Well, I, I guess what I'm saying there is we both observe this. If you think about where the catch basin is, and I'll just pick a number, you may have to go eight feet across and five feet out, cut out that asphalt, and recontour it so the water flows into the drain. Because so what's happening now it just runs right by it. Okay. So I'd do the same thing yeah, that I was asking. Same yeah. idea. Yeah. Amy. So I guess I'm wondering, how are we going to get this all done? Some of it seems to be on Legacy Farms property. Some might be on Wilson Street. Might be the DPW's responsibility. So. Well, my, my proposal was, <clears throat> as I mentioned Phil today, Excuse me. <clears throat> we would like to have my engineers come up with a more definitive plan, other than which is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're getting uh, drainage calculations from VHB, who did the original design. We're going to give those to Bowler. Bowler's going to look at this area, come up with something more definitive. Once we do that, we're going to give it to Phil, so Phil hopefully can bless it or critique it. <coughs> Once we do that, nice. then we'll bring it back to this board. At the same time, I want to meet with John Westling and say, look, this is sort of a a marriage of some things we're going to do, some things maybe you should do, and we'll talk to John. When we're all on the same page about who's doing what, we'll come back to the board and say, this is what we as a group are going to do. Go ahead. You just relate what John Westerling said. Yeah, jo and I think Roy has actually probably talked to John sooner than I have. John was hoping to be here at this meeting today, but he wasn't. Um, he wasn't in today. He wasn't able to make it. But also, similar to what Roy had just said, talking to him, we both realized that it makes, makes the most sense for DPW to jump in once we have something concrete exactly. on okay. John, I, I was, <coughs> John and I have discussed this. Okay. Um, what is the time frame on that? I think we can probably have something within the next week and a half, probably two weeks. We'll get it to Phil, we'll get it to John. Uh, assuming Phil agrees with it, then I think we can take the next step with John and say, We'll say, gee, we'll do X, Y, and Z, John, in the things in the public way. How do you want to handle it? Okay. Anything? Nope. So I had a couple of things. There, there are two chapters here, right? Think of the two chapters of the book. You got the first part, that's the, the part on Wilson from the gas facility down to Legacy North. That water, to Roy's point, doesn't even go near the, the basin right now. It goes just to the left of that for a number of different reasons. Now, it sounds like you have a plan to address that. It's great, because what happens with that water on the street it flows over and actually goes into Rafferty, right? So that's where it goes. Yep. And then that is kind of done. Then chapter two starts on that other side of Legacy North. And that's where I think the swale sounds like that's a plan there. It's above my pay grade to some degree. But if you can engineer it the right way, it's going to remove that stream that's been created essentially now and kind of catch all that that run off from Legacy North as well as anything that kind of flows over. My only two comments. One is more of a time of the year thing. It'll be interesting, ice crates and snow crates a different kind of facade, and we, and we can't kind of analyze it for that. Um, but I think once you get beyond the swell, I do, I do recall vividly <coughs> there is water that continues to migrate on, and maybe the curvature by kind of creating a bit of a crown is gonna kind of keep it to the, 
east side of the road and not kind of go over and kind of potentially have an impact on Kruger or in that area. So I'm just curious, Roy, just in terms of beyond that swell, is there any, any thought or proposal or would that be something with John? Well, I actually agree with Phil's point. That is, I think to do this, to do, putting aside everything we just talked about, but let's talk about the road itself because the road itself has sort of a gentle swale in it that yeah. collects the water. So if you picture in the wintertime, mm -hmm. you've got water running down that's freezing in a portion of the road because just of the sheer <coughs> contour of the road itself. If the road had a proper crown in it, it would go to the sides, but because it's sort of cut this kind of thing. Oh, well. So in a perfect world, an overlay would be the best way to handle it. But I think the now, let us do the engineering parts relative to either things that are on the edge of the road, things we can readily identify, and including things that are on our property. And once we've done that, let us then sit down with the DPW and see if they're willing to do uh, pulverizing and overlay, I think would be the best way to go. Thank you. And, and also to incorporate the changes to the lot relative to uh, uh, <coughs> trails at, 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 at Legacy. Mm. Because they are, you know, as, as Mike had mentioned, you know, there is a, a plan to put a swale yeah. on, the, on, the, on the project side of that. Which will help. Help too. Okay. So, okay. <coughs> Yes, um, you guys brought up a lot of good points. Um, everything's picked over, nothing left. Um, could we just Hang revisit uh, two questions? <coughs> One question: uh, the drain that we found that was filled in was that on adjacent to Legacy Farms North or adjacent to the power company? So you mean the catch basin? The, ca the covered over catch basin. Yeah, the catch basin is 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 just I want to say in this area or just just off the page. It's about halfway between the, <coughs> the more the power company than anything else. Right, um, and then there may be more. I mean, I I only found it by. Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, that's a round circle. Let me go dig it up. <laughs> so, so I've gone by when it's been raining, but I've stayed in my car. So. Um, <laughs> So yeah, there could be more. So one of the reasons we would like to work with the DPW as well is that we have to reach out to, to Eversource to uh, fix things like that because that's something that they have to maintain, I'm assuming. It's probably or is yeah, it the town? Yeah, it's in the right of way though. I would assume it's the town. But there's the, the driveway drainage that they have that's on their property that so also the, leads to that. The, the catch basins are probably in the right of way at the end of that driveway. This four. <coughs> There's four of them within like, what, every 100 feet mm -hmm. in front of their property. Okay. So I don't think, unless it, unless it gets by those, which I didn't see evidence that it would, it's, it's from that point down uh, that that's the issue. So the top of the hill is those questions that right. deep down. But I don't also don't know. Like like uh, Roy and I, we, we tried to look for the outlet that's for the one at at, at Wilson Street. It, it's pointing across the street. There's a wet area across the street, but it looked like it's been filled for I don't know how long. So I don't know. Years. If that's where it's longer it goes. than you and I have been on the planet, okay. probably. Um, <coughs> so the that the north side and the trees that were cut down by Eversource or that whole issue. Um, we need to work with DPW to figure out one what to do about that because that could affect water runoff as well. Um, the next part of the question is is the downhill portion beyond uh, the purple mark here where you, you you will be making some corrections. But what happens after that point? And we were talking about having a swale in the side of the road and, and what is the what is where is the standing of that as far as your understanding both of you i was told the last meeting the neighbors didn't want to swale mm -hmm. so I, I don't know where it stands so what i'm going to recommend that, that roy has his engineers too is to compile compile all the issues that we just discussed on uh -huh. a plan and say we could do and, and have it like a, a menu of things we could do and then we would sit down with with john to say you know, this this is these are things that could be done to provide improvement for this. You know, whose responsibility is it? You know, um, relative to the, 
obviously the overflow of the swale is is the is the project's problem you know and if there's excess flow coming down legacy farms road north then i think that would be uh, roy's issue but there's definitely flow i've noticed coming from the card path and um, i'm not sure how it, that should be handled um which where's the car oh, that's which car path? I see on the north saying. on us yeah. uphill side of the that's south kind of part of chapter one right that's that first side because it really flows into the <coughs> uh, catch drain at mm -hmm. the Coral Wilson yeah. right you can see you, it you're talking about the gravel road it, for the nursery yeah yeah yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, I, I and I can picture water running down that yeah, yeah. I mean the simple yeah. fix to with that would be is to the north side of that excavate that right across and run a drain yeah. right down to that catch basin yeah. and just have it all run into it just um, that's a good point to, to keep in mind what since we're I, I agree with Phil's idea I think we're going to come up with a whole problem. sort of a potpourri of things to look at I'm and encouraged that the DPW is engaged with this too so yeah, that's, they are. that's awesome um, I want to make sure it's I'm mindful of the time I want to hear <coughs> comments from the butters and neighbors well, thank you could we set a date when he might come back and we could discuss what we've learned we will yeah okay. definitely and on that point I think it's very important to have John or someone from DPW here to, mm -hmm. to be a kind of a point person. What? Okay, so I object to just to introduce yourself, Katie. Katie Towner, Kruger Road. So um, I object to the point that you're making that there's an existing swale on Wilson Street there, from no. the Legacy Farms to the Kruger Road. We have before and after pictures, okay? Before all of the, the earth was moved, um, it's, it's not just that you cut down a few trees. There's a very large area of, of acres and acres and acres of that whole corner of, of legacy farms that was disturbed, that was, um, you know, it's not just the big trees. There, there was all kinds of, it was a tree farm. There was, there was all acres and acres of trees that were holding the drainage, okay? And the, the area <coughs> of earth that was disturbed that caused this whole problem, okay? Nobody is owning up to that, all right? And, you know, I went and read the bylaws and it says that if you disturb a certain acreage of earth, you're supposed to come up with a plan to mitigate the results. And that has not been done. You're, 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 just, you're just going around the problem saying, oh, yeah, so we cut down a couple of trees. We are talking we're about working collaboratively to come up with a plan. That's what we're engaged It was in. not a meadow, OK? I understand. There was a lot I of, understand. There was a lot of trees, bushes, um, <clears throat> all kinds of vegetation that was holding the, I am very aware. Okay, yep. and the the so there was there was no there's no existing swale. The before all of the ground was disturbed, there was there was uh, four feet of road between the pavement and the stone wall. Okay, and there was no um, road damage. Okay, there was no road damage. There's no ruts. There's no um, there's no swale, okay, and that's that that's what we should have. Any mitigation for all of the disturbance of the earth and all of the flow of the water needs to take place on their property. There there is no room to reshape the road to bend it down into the into the um, you know, there's a stone wall there, so so reshaping the road and creating a swale is 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 not an option. The, if, if I may, hold on, just uh, no, wait, hold on, please. The I the one point I agree with them on is that the sizing of this this basin was was I I um I, I've been talking to John Westerling and he he says there's a design spec for how this was sized. Okay, but he couldn't come up with it. Now, when the town lets a contract out, 
there's a spec attached to it, okay? So, you know, that should be available, <coughs> right? And that should be available electronically. And um, that was talked about, but it hasn't been provided. So the, the analysis of how they came up with this size basin, I, I, you know, I'd be very interested to read that because it's, and that's coming. It's, it's not, you know, something was not right there. So yes, the basin needs to be greatly enlarged on their land, not, and, and also the, the, the plans, the plans for this basin show it designed to flow into the road. It says flowing into existing swale. There is no existing swale. So, so the, the <coughs> review of the, the, the design and the review of the whole thing was, was um, not proper. And my reading of the construction plans, the construction management plans that go with every part of these projects is that as soon as the developer becomes aware that, that there's a problem, they're supposed to report it. So I'm gonna and have to And the board, is, the board is supposed to order a plan to fix it in 30 days. Now I read the plan, I read the construction management plan, I read the town bylaws. And for three years, we've had this, this stream, I mean this is, this is the stream that's been created that goes right into Wilson Street. Yeah, Katie, and in the winter Katie, it freezes. Seriously, we're gonna talk about the plan when they bring it together. We understand that there's a problem. We are engaged with this with you because there's a problem. Everybody's engaged in problem solving, but the plan is not in front of us yet. But we will have a chance to talk about that. I'm gonna ask you to but wrap up so I, other people can speak if they need to. My, my point is, is that, is that the complete ownership of the problem is not, is not just the water running down, you know, Legacy Farms Road. It's a result of the disturbance of the entire parcel and the lack of, of a credible plan to, um, to deal with that. You know, it was, you know. I totally understand your point, and I think that I am personally committed to a forward motion plan to problem solve and not necessarily try and figure out exactly where all the mistakes were made, but I, I appreciate your points. Right, and I mean, they're, they're, the before and after, I mean, you know, this, this, you can go to Google Maps or anything, you can see the before and after that, that the road did not have any drainage problems prior to the large scale disturbance of the parcel. And it does have significant problems now, we're hoping to fix it, I agree. Anybody else? I would like to public? address some of the points that she just made. Okay, but I'm going to ask the public if there's anybody else first, and then I'll come to you, Frank. <coughs> Did you want to say anything to the points, or are you all, all set? Uh, I'm all set. Okay, Frank. Thank you. Um, Katie, first of all, sorry. I, I was under the impression that we could get all this planned out and finished tonight, um, but it, sounds, it seems like there's more to it on the engineering side of plans that are underway. Um, that we'll look forward to that are in process so that um, so I just wanted to say that I thought we could maybe finish it all tonight <coughs> so sorry uh, second of all um, I mentioned earlier tonight about some of the trees that were taken down by Eversource um, not forgetting that some trees that were taken down on, on this property uh, we just need to identify the trees that are, are in the right of way that were taken down <coughs> It's under the scenic roadway bylaw. Um, so if you, if you have photos between uh, the road and the wall of trees that were taken down, that there were, were over there were no there were no walls taken down. No, I talk about trees. No, excuse me. There were no trees taken down by Let's the wall. Let's just let him finish. And okay. if if any of those trees over three or to five inches uh, can be identified, then uh, that's something we could take up uh, under the scenic. By law, scenic road by law, uh, which is our which is under our jurisdiction. Um, as Roy said, I, I don't think any of the, the stone walls were, were removed or anything. But um, as far as they're planning for doing some of this work, um, some some of the walls might need to be touched temporarily to go under them uh, for some of this work. And that's something that certainly would be uh, 
possible under the scenic road bylaw uh, as well. Um, lastly, the, the section beyond from Kruger Street below, uh, I don't really remember having no swales or no, uh, no attention to it one way or the other. I, think, I thought that we'd be talking about it and finding a solution uh, for the remainder of Wilson <coughs> Street, which is along this property as part of the entire package of Legacy Farms Road North and um, Wilson Street intersection. So uh, that's still very viable if it is a swale, if it is whatever it is to, to make the road safer and drier is, is the solution that we'd be looking for. And that would take DPW input, as of course. Um, so hopefully our next meeting we'll be able to have more information uh, when the fire department comes and the chief can't make it, he sends a lieutenant. So I know maybe it's the last minute that um, uh, John couldn't make it, but hopefully next time we'll have him here in person and uh, we'll have all our bases covered. Right now we're just two thirds of our bases. So um, I just wanted to um, also ask, just as a point of information, if the board is amenable, um, what kind of tree replacement fund we have when we have scenic road disturbances and people can't replace trees and they they uh, put money into the fund just to be prepared to potentially ask to use some of that money as part of the collaborative approach to fill fill back in there does that sound like a good idea to at least just have that information information's always good yep um i also wanted to make the point that um i understand that the dbw positions um road mix buckets up there so that people can uh, at the at the intersection so people can try and keep that mm. road safe and it's it's clearly an indication that everybody knows that it's a hazard and, and we need to fix it yes sir uh, Rod Town or Kruger Road I do agree with what you're saying uh, my question is that they are going to re-engineer it uh, what assurance do I have that they're going to get it right the second time okay in other words, they went and did this, and it has failed miserably, okay? Um, I, I want to submit these pictures to the, to the planning board. You just pass them around. This is the swale coming down Lazy Farms North, going out here. This is just a puddle of water that is just sitting there. Where's going. Wilson Street, back here? This is Wilson right here. Okay. And so that's just a puddle of water that's just sitting there growing the algae now. Okay, so this is just one so is, this, is this the swell that you're talking about? Yes. It needs to be enlarged. Yes. It's not really a puddle of it. I want to pass this around. This is the road before any of the drainage problems happen. Yeah. And this is what it looks like now. This is up here. Yeah, that's pretty clear. So I, I, I invite you and I implore you to stay engaged. We don't know what the plan is yet. We don't either, but right. this is just, and it goes to one other issue I've been trying to bring up uh, further up the road where there's a, a drainage culvert that has been continually passing water to the point where the road is now rusty and nobody will take ownership <coughs> of that. Where is that? Uh, I have a picture. If, if I could make a comment on the detention, um, I don't think it's adequate, frankly, you know, as everyone's been saying. I took the, the picture while you were walking by today. Oh, the, proof, the proof is in the pudding. If it's overflowing, it's overflowing. Right. I don't so want to do it twice. Right. So I'm going to oversize it. Right. So if, if the engineer should, it says it should be two, I'm going to make it three. My hope is I, that I don't this want to do it twice. Just the spankiest really little helps. project, and it, it, clearly it solves some of the problems. And I, I really, I fully appreciate the neighbors' concerns. There are safety concerns. There are huge aesthetic concerns. There are disruption concerns, and, uh, and we want to make sure that a safety first. Yeah. But um, there is, there is at least from my my perspective. A responsibility to restore some of the, the aesthetics that were disturbed as well. No, we, we agree with that. Uh, two things for the record. One, I never said there was an existing swale on the street. I, propo I, I, I proposed a swale. I'm not saying there's an existing right. swale. Okay. That's number one. Number two, we didn't take the trees down. It's, 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 yeah, it's, I'm not going to solve who took the no, trees it, down. I'm and, and there's sure. no sense even going there because yep. 
you, 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 but we, uh, yeah. Eversol is never going to own up to it. So, I, if if you all recall, I did I did yeah. offer to pay for and put in five three to three and a half inch, three to three and a half inch caliber maple trees, I'm counting which on are them. pretty good sized trees. Mm -hmm. You know, at the right time, we can talk about that, and I'd be happy to put those in it per direction of where the neighbors or the town wants them yep. relative I to that stretch. Mayor. Yes, Dave. So I just. I know that we're hearing a lot of complaints from the neighbors um, and a lot about the history and I agree with you Muriel I don't think we should rehash the history I think we should move forward and try to fix what we can um, but I just want to take the other side of it too and uh, kind of thank Roy for working with the town because he's he's kind of going out of his way it's not we're not asking we're not dragging him in here all the time he's up uh, in and in, in, uh, his defense too well not his defense but for us this really just came before us the last couple of months so this is not something that we've been talking about for a long time I know the problem was out there for a long time, but um, I would just suggest to the neighbors that, <coughs> like you did, it's gonna, it's gonna take a little time to get it fixed, but it's in front of us now. We're coming up with a plan. We have all the parties involved, so. And I, uh, yeah, I agree. I appreciate that people are uh, engaged in a proactive fashion. And, and, uh, On all sides. Yeah. 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 I echo David's cool. statement. Yes, yeah. sir. Absolutely. Yeah. Concrete yeah. next uh, time. For small uh, reservoir road, I have, um, here, I dug out because my wife did the scenic road application back in 2008. And when I have this section of it, and it shows Wilson Street from Rafferty Road. And aside from the trees, there was maybe half a dozen at the inter intersection of Rafferty Road and Legacy Farms North, that Eversource perhaps cut down or whoever, that were large trees. But between Rafferty Road and approximately 650 feet down Rafferty Road towards Kruger, there were 37 trees with three inches or greater to meet the scenic road requirements on this plan. It's on file in town. I'm wondering what Mr. McDowell can do about replacing those, or at least creating a buffer where they were cut down. Now, I'm not saying he cut them down, it might have been Ludlow that cut them down, whoever, but they came in yep. and cleared it all out. In the past decade. I'm sorry, <coughs> I'm unclear. Where is this? On, on Rafferty? Rafferty. <coughs> oh, right, Wilson. I think. Which, which Wilson? side of Wilson now? Right. Which side? Right from sure. here, all the way down, mm -hmm. five poles from pole 60, mm -hmm. used to be 59, mm -hmm. down to here, 37 trees. I know that I know that when Eversource replaced all those, they put all those brand new poles in. They cut down a lot of trees. How many? I don't know. <coughs> so showing you what was. Yeah. No, and I I appreciate that, and I want to make sure that we um, we attend to that. The next the next question I have <coughs> relates to whatever work is done to fix the road and the drainage issues. Is the town going to maintain it? Because they're not right now. Okay. Yeah, that's a fair question. Still, I'm still waiting a month for action on Rafferty Road for drainage issues by Eversource Plant. Nobody's gone down there to clear the catch basins that he put in. The pipe's going through under the road. They asked him to put it in. It's not cleared. Uh -huh. A month. Thank you. Could we have a copy of that? Yeah, I was just, could we have a copy of that now because it's just easier since it's in your hands? All in the and town hall records are all in pods. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is, he wants to take a picture, I think. Is I what have, we have. Yes. So, in addition to setting the next date, then we'll meet and talk about this. Can when the plan is in place, can we have some checkpoint periods, like so that we'll yeah. only go through a whole year and all four seasons that we check in that it's functioning as Well, expected. I'd like to get those done this summer, so let's kind of talk about timelines. Yeah, yeah. So I'm waiting on information from VHB. Once I get that, I'm going to give it to Bowler. I'm going to have Bowler do a plan. I'm going to critique it with Phil. Once Phil's on board, we're going to then sit down with John Westerling. I'm guessing if we can move it quickly, three, four weeks. Okay. So we, when our, our next meeting is pretty full, right? No. Well, the next meeting is pretty full, but the 25th is kind okay. of wide open. Yeah, and that's no. What? That's that's yes. only two weeks from now. The twenty fifth of June. Of June. 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 Okay. June. I'm pushing you a, mu a little no, over no, a June month. No, no, June would be fine. Is the twenty fifth okay? I think so. I'll double check with everybody, but sounds okay. good. Um, what time? Do you have to set a 
We don't have to set a time, yeah, but we should set a time. time. We have interested yeah. neighbors. Right now we have the, uh, the Buckland and Leonard at 7.30. 7.30, so say 8.30? 8.30, 8.30. 8.30? 8.30. 8.30 on June 25th. It's not a, a formal hearing, so. You don't want it to go nine just in case? Because we don't know how long. I really don't. The neighbors are here. Okay. But, but That's fair. So 8.30, June 25th. We're going to hopefully have plans, more formalized plans to discuss. And the DPW director. And the DPW director or, or his designee. Or his designee. Um, and some review, hopefully. It, that allows time for some review from the town engineers as well. Great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just one more point. Is there any movement um, in regards to replacing the tree warden who's passed on last year? Because right now we've got John Wesseling doing his full-time job plus active tree warden. Yeah, I don't know what's happened with that, but it's a good question. Do Is there anything this board can do to recommend re they replace it with a, replace Mr. Gleason with a full-time person? Um, I know that Joe Regan went before the select, and I just happened to see it because I was watching some of the budget discussions, and he made the same point. I don't know if any movement has happened. But Does can this board make a I, recommendation? I had a, rec I had a phone call with, with Joe, and he, he has some ideas. But I said, Joe, well, would you like to be a tree warden? <laughs> He's like, I'm retired. He has enough to do with his job. Um, we should be pushing. Uh, we had town meeting last week, and I think those were three late nights. It's not It's not um, a terrible idea. I was wishing we had a tree warden uh, when we were talking about Chamberlain. It, it, it went well, but still, it's, it's a good idea. We need one. I was going to suggest maybe we could find out the status of that before our next meeting, and yeah. then, it, then we could decide mm -hmm. if we wanted to write a letter to yeah. the selectmen. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks okay. for the input. And there we are. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is approval not required. Wilson Street Legacy Forms LLC. Or do you want to? <laughs> and I have a question. Can we go to the Board of Selectmen? And I'm, as you're I'm looking over to my left, everyone calls it Legacy Farms Road North. It's technically Legacy, Legacy Farms, Farms North. North. Does it make sense to <laughs> I ask? I call it Legacy Farms North. No, because everybody calls it that to That's actually what the town go and the get town. the name yeah. changed to what it's referred to by everyone in town. <laughs> Wait, what's the difference between Legacy Farms North without is what road. it's called without the word road, which nobody calls it that. Everybody calls it Legacy Farms Road North. Huh. And it's not Rafferty anymore. <laughs> so originally the whole road was simply called Legacy Farms Road, period. But then the fire department, the previous chief wanted to be Legacy Farms South, and Legacy Farms North. That's the reason the way it is. Each one has to be signed. No, no, just now signed so you guys can look at them. Oh, okay. So my suggestion is now that I'm. <laughs> In that regard, whatever you'd like to do is fine with us. You want to just quick? Sure. Th this plan is. Uh, what you've seen before just doesn't show any housing on it. It's the first of four phases, that block that you see. John, can you pass down one more? Yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. Come on, you kids. We're, We're doing both fine. Both fine. Both yeah. of them, John and I. Are just, yeah. Apparently, some people don't want to share. <laughs> 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 one, two, three, four, right? Five. Okay. Part of that's the part of that will be open space. Okay. Gotcha. Any questions from the? Uh, John, I guess. Yes. Okay. Sorry for my ignorance, but I'm not sure what we're voting on. I know I know we're not voting. Sorry, but this A and R, what it represents. It's splitting. It's splitting one lot of a larger piece. Can you just explain so the short sure, number? If you don't mind me. So the plan delineates the parcels on the north side. 
Yeah. Okay. Of legacy mm -hmm. farms, of parcels having so frontage on legacy yeah. farms. And listen. So if you look at lot A17, mm -hmm. that piece is being split off because right now it's all one big block. So A17 would be a lot where you see now lot A18, eventually that'll be cut to two. And then lot A19 will be a separate lot. So it'll be one, two, three, four eventually. Okay. Not hmm. eventually. No, not eventually. Yeah, not eventually. Right now, it's, it's right now it's simply lot A16. Well, it's changing. This was all A16. Yes. So the last time that the board was And now there was one, two, three. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, was there an A16 left? No, not anymore. That no, there used to be. Okay. Oh, that's what this was? Correct. About the whole big block. Okay. okay. Just out of curiosity, why the crazy shape to A19? You mean that little pie piece in the back? Yeah. yeah. That's in Ashland. No, yeah. No, 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 no over here on the right. A19, it has oh, like a front half of it. The, the yeah. reason why that's kind of odd looking like that. It's the way our takedowns were with Pulte. It looks odd here, but when you see the housing on it, you don't understand why. Okay. okay. Eventually, they're all going to have their own lots, or still master lots. You know? it, like, will like A14, a bunch of houses are on A14 right now. Will they all be individual lots for each house? No, actually, because it's a, a condominium style, it'll be a, a homeowners association and a landowners association. So that all these strange lots on paper will stay looking like this, but in the field, you, you don't see it. Right. Okay, any further discussion? We get a motion? Um, I'll make a motion that we approve this. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. So carried. Can you decide How many you signatures? Start? Two signatures. Two? Okay. Who wants to be our lucky two? Lucky two. How about John or uh, yeah, John? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good idea. That's a good call. Okay, okay, let's just, well, why don't we just do the next item is approve the minutes I'll from the April minutes. 9th. Uh, so we have a second on the minutes. Second. Yep. Second. Any discussion? All in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carry. Again, a beautiful job. And can we get a motion to close the meeting? <coughs> so moved. So Second. All in favor? Oh. Just a piece of discussion. Okay. We talked about sending a letter about the. And I completely forgot about it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just get you just share okay. your ideas, or we'll sit down and do okay. one or whatever. Okay. okay. John, can I? You're still an office. Oh, one more thing. Yep. I one forgot more thing. Uh, the summer dates uh, were excluded mm. from the memo. I apologize. Uh, but just upcoming, if people want to write this down, maybe check your summer schedules. Uh, we have, of course, June 25th coming up. June 11th. Uh, and June I 11th, think yeah, you, but July 9th. And before you finish, I think you did say that you wanted to meet every Monday night during the summer. <laughs> Is that what I had said? Yes, yeah. during I the would, interview, you had mentioned that. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. yes. That's what I said. I knew that before I made the decision. <laughs> Um, yeah, July 29th. Oh my, I'm sorry. July 9th. July 23rd. Yeah. August 13th. And August 27th are our just scheduled summer dates. So we um, try to have met once a month in the summer, July and August. Good luck. Yeah, there's a bit of a pace happening. Yeah. <laughs> In a perfect world, Frank, yes. I think. And I think typically what has happened is if something is not scheduled ahead of time, we'll say, okay, try not to plan this date, that and that's the way it's worked, but not this far in advance. Exactly. Yeah. And I guess we should all let you know if we have to be traveling and we'll miss, because there are too many people missing. Yeah, yeah. 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 vacation or something. Yeah, if you know your summer vacation now. Then well, we, <laughs> al we also have upcoming meeting, a meeting with the Board of Selectmen at some point in July or June or July, yeah, right. whatever that yeah, 10 days yeah. thing. I am notice so looking is. forward to that. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> That's going to be great. <laughs> so we, we, should be, we should be very careful with our time, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So yes. there's a uh, motion on the table. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourning to TJ's to TJ's. take John out for a drink. Mm -hmm. All right. Doesn't matter. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Roy. Thank you.